2016, and you're watching Redacted. This episode you know it was Woo! brought to you by Antlion Audio. Woo! They have a uh, giveaway oh, that's Mike. happening right now. So if one of you guys can post the link to this post in their chat, um, they're going to be giving away a mod mic, both adapters, a Superlux headset, which is really awesome, and an Antlion Uber mouse pad. Uh, definitely go check that out on uh, the Antlion blog. Right there. We also have uh, put up the uh, the giveaway up on our website on Redacted.tv as well. You can enter on other places. You know, we are doing it all through Gleam IO. So you have up to 14 ways to enter. So good luck. And this is it's going for the, for the 160 next... bucks. Yeah. It's good for... Crazy. It's going on for two weeks. So good luck and get into it. I tried to enter myself, but I uh, had to... Actually, that sounds a lot dirtier than I intended that sentence. Yeah. Uh, I, but uh, I couldn't subscribe to my own channel. It was, yeah. it was depressing. Yeah, you probably you probably shouldn't enter that one. <laughs> out of all honesty. Um, anyways, uh, guys, how you been? How's your last week been? I know... It's stressful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you could put it up into one word... Stress. Work is gonna be stressful. Or gamer, how was your last week? If you had it in one word. Shit. <laughs> wow. I think me and Border both having yeah. pretty pretty rough. Mine was mine was yeah. uh I'll just say busy. Yeah. So I might say... get blown away. I just can't deal with anything. Fuck this pen. <laughs> I'm just gonna say busy. Um, but Twerk, you, uh, recently you were playing uh, some Osiris, right? And yeah, some Osiris stuff, New so... Dawn. Um, I really like it. So I kind of talked about last week on the podcast that I wasn't super um, like excited about playing Star Citizen that much right now. I was looking for uh, some other games to, to figure out what, what else I wanted to do. And Osiris New Dawn just came out it was a popular game on steam and i was like all right uh let me pick this up and see what this is all about and it's a it's like a base building survival game right uh in space you basically crash land on this planet and and have to survive there and there's all sorts of alien creatures out there to kill you and there's um items for you to pick up or resources for you to pick up and then you just build your base and you actually leave the planet. And I left the planet this morning. Um, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I saw that. And then, so the finish game for this, you'll be able to go to other planets and different asteroids and things like that. But right yeah, now, it's, it's an it's early access game. Early access game. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was watching really when you were on the, the little speeder bike, zipping around, smashing, yeah. into, smashing into things, breaking it. And then you realize you could, like, repair it on multiple levels. For, I would say for an early access game, it is really polished, except I have not played the multiplayer yet. I just wanted to feel out the game mechanics and see how it would be. Right. Um, and the... I mean, I've seen you die, like, behind railings when you get stuck and had to force respawn. I didn't die once. Yeah. I wouldn't even count that as a death, because I had I mean... to kill myself because I was <laughs> stuck. So I did not die to any anything, which, that's also part of the not being necessarily super polished is the the enemy should be a right, little harder right. than it was i think right as yeah soon like, as you it, have that tank it, you once you had that uh, yeah. hover bike you were just wrecking everything you're like yeah and they were dead and one thing you know i realized that i i still didn't really do is there was like a sniper you could have made your gun into a sniper rifle uh and i never did that and i heard that thing was op so now i kind of want to go back and play a little bit more and see what that was like but it is it is a little bit grindy. There is the uh, the having to like constantly gather resources. Like what you're seeing me do now is mm -hmm. trying to get hydrogen. Fucking pain in the ass to get hydrogen because uh, those those containers to hold. Uh, I don't know. The worm pops out every now and then. Um, yeah. You have to go to certain places, and I'm not going to spoil it for people that want to play because I want it to pop out and scare people. But um, yeah, you have to like take these heavy containers and fill them with gas and. Uh, it's, everything's based on like weight in your in your backpack and stuff. But it was really really fun. 
Right on. So everyone was right comparing on. it and to now, Matt Sky. Obviously, obviously, <laughs> now you're down in Florida. Um, yeah. Um, I know you've been stressing out because of the the hurricane. Oh, it's Hurricane Matthew, right? Yep. Uh, coming up, and you have all your things shuttered up. You had all that stuff purchased from before. Um, but, yeah, so for people who, who don't understand what a hurricane is like um, and the preparations that you need to do, why don't you do a quick walkthrough of, of sort of what you have to do to prepare yourself before the storm hits? Okay, so in Florida, they're, it's, they're actually, you don't need hurricane shutters as much anymore if you have a newer house because they have windows that are like, they can fire a board at them at 150 miles an hour and they won't break. But uh, I don't have those because my house is built in the 80s. So I have hurricane shutters and they're big like aluminum plates basically that right. go over your windows. So if a projectile is flying at 100 and something miles an hour at your house, uh, if it hits the window, it would normally go right through the window and hit somebody or whatever. So now I have to, I have the metal to protect it. And I, so there's only one window that has those. The rest are actually what, what are called like accordion shutters and you just shut right. them. And they're like, are they plastic? No, they're, they're aluminum. They're aluminum and they, and they just protect they're like heavy duty aluminum from, from anything that any debris or anything like that, that hits your wind that your windows, they don't break your windows. Right. Correct. And mm. then you also have to prepare for the power being out. So I have fans that are battery powered, uh, and I have to go out and get batteries for that. I have three days worth of food and lots of water. Right. Um, I had made sure I have cat food for Lola. I also have a. I have to go out and get a cat carrier for Lola because I gave the only one that we had to my ex. Right. You can just so order in takeaway, case I have to you? leave, that I can yeah. take her somewhere. Huh? Just order takeaway. Oh yeah, because they'll come out. You got no. Yeah. <laughs> So on top of that, I also had to go out and get propane, and I posted a picture on Twitter about that, where the line for propane was nuts. Yeah. Um, because if the power goes out, how do you cook? Right. Uh, so I had to get propane, and I have a grill, and I can go. So now I have food. I'm also, tonight, as soon as the podcast is over, I'm going to prepare something in a slow cooker, mm -hmm. and that'll be ready in the morning. And then, then you'll then, have that for a while. I have food for the next few days for that. And then I have canned food on top of that just right, in case. Right. So, um, and, and yeah, so this will, this could potentially impede you coming to citizen con. Yeah. So if there's any going. damage done to my roof, my windows, my house in any way, or if the power is still out by the time I need to leave for the airport, I am not going to citizen con, which is really sad. So bums me out, gotcha. but it's some things are more important than a video game, unfortunately. Even though this is like something I've been waiting for years. Like what? to do. What's right. more important than Citizen Con? Oh, I don't yeah, know. Your house. Your, your <laughs> insurance and yeah. your house. Because like one of the big things is if um, we run out of co we run out of uh, if we don't have power, then I won't have air no. conditioning, and I can't just keep all the doors and windows closed because it'll basically be like an oven, and then Lola will probably die. So I can't really. Um, well, would, what would you do with with Lola if the power is out? Is there any? I would. You can take I can. Because like, okay, any... so here's the thing: is if the power is out, I can just open the windows and have some air circulation. It's going to be hot, but mm -hmm. we're not going to. It's 90 degrees. It's not going to kill us. But if we leave the if there's no air circulation, it's right. like a hot car basically. Especially where my house lays, like right here. I guess right here yeah. is east. And the sun just beats on the house, and it just gets like this room gets really warm. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, um, you remember that you are in Florida, and uh, I believe one of your things is "Thou shall eat thy neighbor if you're hungry." So, I mean, <laughs> wow. I don't know any of my neighbors man, either. So, a I Florida man guilty. has <laughs> eaten his neighbors during yeah. Hurricane Matthew. You'll end up uh, on uh, the Florida Man that, subreddit. That would be a stream I would watch. If you <laughs> only knew. If you only yeah. knew. No, Social eating. It's... I'm eating all my friends. I've got some crazy eating. stories about oh, that man. shit that I won't share. But... And uh, Board Gamer, what have you been up to this past week? And Well, uh... I haven't slept in like... I haven't didn't sleep last night at all. So I haven't slept in many hours. Um, and I can't count. Um... And I've been dealing with my YouTube channel. Uh, so, guys, guys, oh, fuck you, twerk. 
<laughs> it's, listen, I'm not laughing at you. It's just okay, ridiculous. So, okay. YouTube categorizes channels and th these categories. I like think you should change places, your, your channel name to Animal Kingdom. <laughs> well, well, so yeah. YouTube categorizes them based on what you do, science and people and all that sort of stuff. And because CIG name all their spaceships and weapons, not all of them, but a lot of them, after animals and insects, YouTube has decided that my category, rather than games and gaming, is animals. So it tries to put my SEO with fluffy cat, cat things and, um, oh, look at the biggest bee in the world. This is, <laughs> oh, that's great. And then my channel, like, oh, I love Chris Roberts. I want to play a space game. And it's just not an appropriate category for my channel. So I've been having to deal with that. Um, I've got, oh, man. You, you get surprised. You look at stuff and then you go, oh, yeah, badger, bulldog, panther, hornet, um, Quillers and Eagle, I suppose. Um, all the other ones. Mako, I can't remember. They're all animals. Bloody bastards. Um, but other than that, I've been getting ready for like a million different Citizen Con videos, just getting prepped for them, getting some background kind of video because um, it's going to be like free flight weekends and stuff. So I've got stuff ready for that. Um, getting all my like a ca spare money in my store credit and stuff ready to buy a Polaris sit double checking to make sure I've got the money to buy a Polaris. Do I want the Polaris? Do I want to keep an interest? What, what? I don't know. They're all expensive and I want them all. <laughs> I want everything. I want at least the big ones, the big ones. Um, so yeah, I mean, I haven't really been up to much other than the same old, uh, star citizen based video stuff. This week's really annoying because we've got no ATV or RTV as well. Right. So, I've had to keep myself busy, <laughs> which is really bad when you're really tired. So I'm playing lots of, like, Don't Starve and um, watching Twerk play a lot of Osiris. 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 Yeah, but other than that, nothing much. What about you, sir? That's, the, that's you. What so have you been up to? For me, um, I just got back from TwitchCon, which was really awesome. Met a lot of really cool people. Ran into people that I had run into and made friends with at PAX West. Uh, hung out with everybody. And then um, also made a lot of really, a lot of new friends, which was super awesome. I had a really good time, although crazy busy running around with my, like, like a chicken with my head cut off, uh, going to different meetings, meeting different people. Even when I'm back right now, like I'm getting ready to go back to CitizenCon. Uh, or brought back down to LA. I just arrived on Monday night or Tuesday morning and then I leave on Thursday night. So it's like um, Just having everything Did and do it and doing all kinds of stuff while I'm here to try and prepare for citizen con and and do all of that Obviously, I'm gonna be streaming on the Friday and the Saturday uh, on citizen con um, Which is gonna be really awesome and you guys can check that out going to twitch.tv slash star citizen and following that and then on the Sunday will be the big event uh, for that day but yeah it's just been like all, all kinds of crazy I have all I have a billion stories and I'm not going to go through all of them here I've went through most of them on the, my channel and if you guys want to hear more of them uh, you can stick around after the podcast and I'll go through them I do have one story I want to tell because it was something that uh I, I really enjoyed doing, and a, I know Twerk couldn't be there, and I was at the big I, after party. I have regrets. And it was, it was crazy um, that this after party was in uh, Petco Stadium, and it was pretty awesome. They had, like, uh, Steve Aoki, Darude, T-Pain, like, it, it was whatever. And they had a section for VIP, which was all of the broadcasters. Uh, basically at a VIP area and we had free beer and wine and then you had to pay literally $15 for a mixed drink. It was kind of ridiculous. Um, but uh, I ran into one of Torque's favorite streamers and I knew this because we from PAX South, I found this Clifford. out. And God damn it, Clifford. God damn it, Clifford. So I went to uh, and found... Mr. Gold Glove, and I'm looking for the video here. I, w I went and found Gold Glove on the floor, and I was like, hey, man, it would be really cool 
because we were having drinks and just standing in a circle with a bunch of other people. And I was like, it would be really cool if uh, if you could do this for me. Uh, my buddy Twerk is a really big fan, and he wasn't able to make it. He should be standing here with us right now. And I was like, can you just can you just say hi? Because I know he, he, he'd like that a lot. And I'm like, and just tell him that he's missing out and whatever. And he's like, yeah, man, for sure. And he's like, uh, I was like, so, so what do you want me to say? I'm like, yo, twerk, just be like, we miss you. We wish you were down here. And he's like, he looks at me. He's like, can I call him a fuck boy for not being here? <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> so we have, oh, I got this video. 17. Hang on. Where is it? Twerk, 17. Fuck boy. Why are you, are you here? here? What the hell are you? Why are you here? You're not a Twitch con. Unbelievable. I gotta go. Anyways. Uh, so I did that. That was really awesome. And then getting the messages from Twerk uh, first thing in the morning. <laughs> like, oh my god, FML, what's going on? Freaking out. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was it was a really good time. And uh, that was probably one of my highlights is being able to put Twerk on the spot from a distance like that. But yeah, just, just sure. running around and, and doing all that stuff. And if you guys want to hear more stories, uh, I know there's people in chat right now like, for example, Captain Bailey hung out with him at uh, one of the after parties. Really cool guy. Like, I, I can't say that about, like, everybody, right? Like, I can say that about every single person that I met. Super awesome. Hung out with Bikeman. Got Bikeman to carry me around like a, like a kangaroo. I was hanging off the front of him. Or, like, hanging out with Sacriel or talking to Lyric or, like, all kinds of guys. It was really awesome. It opened my eyes to, to how broadcasters work together. And uh, I wouldn't change that how experience. they're drunk together <laughs> and how we are drunk together. And I wouldn't change that experience for the world. So uh, it was super awesome. Now we're just in the grind getting ready for uh, Citizen Con. And yeah, moving forward. Um, so pretty awesome stuff. I got to fix my camera here. I just noticed it was going a little crazy. Um, but yeah, so why don't we move on forward? to the news now we have the uh mod mic giveaway which you can yep. uh learn more about by typing exclamation point headset in chat <clears throat> excuse me uh exclamation point headset in chat and that'll give you a link to the uh mod mic blog post where you can fill everything out once again you can also find that on our blog on redacted.tv we also have another one that board gamer set up and uh Yay. board if you want to throw the link in chat for that one yeah. Uh, we're giving away... That's an Avenger, correct? Yeah, it's an Avenger and game package. And we're going to do something like that monthly. Oh, I've been banned by Anna! Oh. You got purged. Oh, Hang yeah, on. your sub ran out this morning for me, too. <laughs> I got it. Unless Soros well, just... I, just sub I, ran out I you. permitted you. I, I just permitted. subbed with you today, Spurk. I literally yeah, no. subbed to you today. Well, you're all your your thing is all messed up though. Yep. Well, ruined. Screw you, Twitch. Ruined. Board, board gamer. Uh, when he subs, there's no alert. Nothing comes up. He just when he, he subs, is a sub, and then he's not a sub. When board and then gamer he is subs, there's no money, and it's because yeah. it's because Thriftbot keeps it all. He's like, hmm, yeah, Thriftbot must cancel I'm, it somehow. He's like, just I, he, in, he's like instant cancel. But before I instant cancel, I'm just going to enter into this giveaway. <laughs> 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 yeah, look at him. Look at him. He's like, yep. Yep. So uh, there is a link in there for the redacted monthly giveaway as well. Um, I believe we have it under, you know what? I'm an asshole because we have it under exclamation point monthly. <laughs> <laughs> I added that in there. But Twerk, if you want to add that and throw that in your channel as well. And if any yeah. of the other broadcasters from redacted are here. Uh, feel free to grab that command, make an exclamation point monthly thing, and and put it in your channel as well. Um, yeah, so we have those going on. Looking forward to uh, that quite a bit. But let's talk about uh, the news. Now, I'm personally not caught up to a lot of things. I just watched ATV for the first time yesterday, briefly, when I was, I was streaming. So I was paying attention to chat and not it entirely. Um, so, Twerk, why don't you talk about uh, the first video where we have the, the flight model? And, uh, yeah, we'll so the, the one thing that they said on RTV, we're, we keep calling it the flight model. They don't, I don't think they know what to call it. The flight model hasn't changed. So the John Pritchett 
flight model that's always been there is exactly the same. Nothing's changing from it at all. It's just uh, the speeds. They're changing the speeds and the levels of you know power that your ships yeah, have the, and stuff like the that. Num- the numbers in the flight model are changing. Exactly. So the SCM speeds have all been roughly halved. And then, uh, so the goal, the point of that is to try and make dogfighting feel more like Wing Commander dogfighting again. More up close and personal. Um, in your face. Uh, one of the things that Luke Presley was telling me uh, in my chat, and I forgot to put it in um, the doc was we, we actually got some screenshots of Luke talking in your chat Soros, Luke talking yep. in my chat um, because that kind of stuff is important too but um, he was talking about how like fighting around Port Olisar or fighting around a station is actually cool now because you can use it as cover right? Without because you're, you're not into it all the time. without yeah. crashing into it all the time you're it's just Everything's slowed down, and it does, but it doesn't feel. But um, what has sped up? Wrong. What, what, they, what they were talking about, maybe speeding up, was the acceleration and deceleration. Right. So you can quickly start so, and quickly stop, and you're not going to slide. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that makes it even more viable. That was the thing. So it was like they did. They want to keep that momentum in because they want to make it like as realistic as possible. But they, yeah, they want to um, bring up that acceleration and deceleration. I, I think they also want to bring up like. Um, the cruise speeds a little bit right because you have less control with that and then with the combat speeds and stuff like that they're just slowing down like quite significantly right like it's gonna it's gonna feel a lot slower and and the whole point of that is they want to get rid of that um jousting meta is what's happening right now they want to make it feel more like dog fighting and less like jousting from what i understand i could be wrong um but that that's sort of what i took away from this but also it's to make afterburner and boost fuel a lot more useful. They want to increase the amount of boost fuel that you have and then make it actually useful in battles. So larger ships might have larger boost fuel tanks. Um, smaller ships might be able to boost um, um, faster or slower based on the engines and all that sort of stuff. But they want that boost fuel to actually be useful and for you to maybe joust with that, I suppose, right. with that in mind. But one of the things... Yeah, amount. the boost. I think yeah, they, they were... said the boost was going to be faster, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to affect the ship more. The The... Afterburner speeds from the current ships. So, like, let's say they cut. They they said they cut them in half. The the SCM speeds. They haven't touched the afterburner speeds. So, okay. what they what they want that I to be? The yeah, that, this was another thing that Luke said in the chat. So, they want it to be like more of like an escape tool, and they said that in ATV, uh, where they want to make it useful, or in RTV, like where you can. Oh man, I have a missile on me. Let me throw some flares down and then boost away type mm-hmm. of thing or something like that. Or, wow, I'm completely outnumbered. I need, you, you have to have an option to get away, and that's that. That's one of the options. It makes me quite happy for um, ships like the M50 fighting against a slightly larger ship that the, the other ship, the larger ship, might be able to run down the M50 eventually because it's more of a marathon runner than a sprinter. It will right, have more boost right. fuel, so it will be able to maybe keep up with it longer. Maybe. Um, I was, I was, I was assuming that it's like interdicted or whatever. That, that was my hope. Um, but all in all, it's uh, it's exciting to know that they they do see that and they're getting close and close to that those final changes and they're they're making more of those balance passes with the flight model now. Um, and this should be ready for two point six. Is that correct? Is that what they said? That they're they're planning for all of this to be in for two point six. No, I mean it'll all be in two six, but it sounds to me like there'll be another patch before two six. So. What they said on oh, ATV, like I think, and what Chris also said. Two point three. What? A two point five point two or a two point five point three or something. Yeah, like that. something something like that because um, they were looking to push these changes only to the Evocati, mm-hmm. and then it's and then they made um they made a comment of, and then push it to more people, which means well. They'll go the, through that the, the, patch progression that they go through. But that's with important, every bit. though, because because these changes are sweeping and drastic, because they're they're, che- they're halving the speeds, yeah? Um, yeah, and it might might be for the best or whatever. But it's open development, so the greater audience needs to have their say. So mm-hmm. they do need to kind of do that before they just go. And now we put these in. So 
Yeah, I do. I do think that is necessary. It's a necessary step. And so, do you think that's what? Oh sorry. no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, that's what open development is. People think they need to be open with like everything. Open development allows us to get our hands on the game and give our feedback and opinions, so that stuff like this, if it's crap, we tell them it's crap. If it's yeah. great or it needs more work, or we can push them into the correct direction. That's what open development is. We can influence it because they show us stages of development. We are. And what's nice is all they have to do is change numbers. You know. Yes. Now, like this think... ship, this ship isn't performing the way it should. Well, okay, but, but let's change this number, change that number. But, 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 How is it? Trying to change numbers. Yeah. Right. And do you think that things like the boost on the M50, the 350R, and the Herald coming in, that it's going to just, it's going to be able to give them uh, more viable. Uh, and make them feel a lot faster than the other ships. Do you think we're going to see that? Actually, I, that's, that's, bigger, I think that might be part of the part of the change. The reason behind it is that there's there's sh ships coming in that they keep making more ships and they're not fitting. Like, at what point? Where do they s fit within the scale of of uh, speeds? Like fast ships. Like I, it might be because of the Herald, a ship that's super fast. Right. Like. It can't go 600 meters per second in SCM because you can't control any. Like it, like everything yeah, was too fast as it was. It. You couldn't control it. So now it could so go they, 300. They had to bring them down. Or let's say it goes 300, but that's still faster than everything else because they brought the exactly. ships down overall, and yes. it's still can somewhat control. But we know it's going to be uh, straight line beast drag racing uh, info running ship. But yeah, um, the next thing on the docket here we have is weapons. So while I blow so this, up this video, this is all part of the same, um, same discussion. So it's all the 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 changes that they are putting in now. So it's like balance stuff. But before and, they talked about weapons, they did talk about the shields briefly. Yeah, uh, and they said that they're also going to be balancing at the, at the very least the shields at the same time. They'll be doing the the uh, the flight speed changes. Yeah, um, which is quite important, obviously, because time to kill and all that sort of jazz will change drastically and that's why there's also going to be the necessary to rebalance the weapons yeah because don't you think time to kill would go up because you're more up close and personal likely being yeah like I when think... you're when you're close to people they're easier to hit right they're a bigger hitbox so yeah i think it they're, might they're gonna balance time to kill more might hit. with the the shields and the armor and everything as well um, yeah for sure but, th but this might... is a big standardization it thing right if, like stuff, with the if people are and... strafing around each other the time to kill might go up rather than down like it might be harder to hit people because they're Perhaps. dancing around each other because of the amount of uh, got, well, acceleration more... that you have i think once well, again so... it depends on pilot skill so what what's going to happen mm -hmm. most likely is they'll do a first pass they'll put it out to us we'll try it they'll they'll pay attention to the metrics they'll see what everything's looking like they'll go check out youtubers and streamers and stuff like that and then if they need to make more balances to, say, the weapons or the shields or the armor, then they can do that and see what the, where the meta is going. Because, like I said, they want, it, they want to have it so it's more of like a, <clears throat> a skill-based dogfight rather than just, like, blowing each other up for the sake of blowing each other up. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's what we're going to see is, is they might sort of iterate on that or th they, they have a better idea of what they want, especially with Arena Commander being out for as long as it has been. Yeah, and also one last thing. If you guys watched RTB, one of the devs talked about bringing crews into Arena Commander. That's not happening. And that's as far... Okay. That was from Luke's mouth. It was right. like, we are not bringing crews into Arena Commander. So, And, and, and people are... I think he was just talking about a possibility, something he had on his mind. People that are maybe they can do that. About Newtonian physics, what happened to them, whatever. They're still in. They're still in with, with uh, the flight model stuff, and this is going back to the flight model stuff really quickly. Uh, that's still in. They're just slowing the speeds down. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not changing the physics. The thrusters still need to be where they need to be, and if you lose a thruster and, and things like that, it's still going to change the way your, your ship flies, and you're still going to drift around and things like that. They're just changing the acceleration, deceleration, and the, yep. the top speeds. of specifically, The balance has changed. I've specifically the, the, is combat, the, same. the balance has changed. Uh, the combat uh, speeds there. And just before we go to anything else, I'm seeing people like ask questions in the chat already. If you guys have questions that you want to have asked on the podcast, we answer them towards the end of the stream. So if you type exclamation point question in chat, there'll be a link that comes up and you can Son fill out that bitch. form and then we'll answer your question. Beat me to so. a board. 
Yeah. We try yeah. to get to every question we can. So um, yeah. if you just put it in the chat, it's we're not going to see and, it. And those changes, although aren't strictly Newtonian, neither were the original speeds. Um, and the game is balanced for fun. Yeah. So they're not going to go super realistic with everything, because otherwise there'd be no sound in space. And I don't know how fights would be done. There probably wouldn't be energy shields. But we want some fun in the game. So sure. that's, but that's if you have any questions that. about that, put them in there. We'll read it and we'll uh, we'll get to it then. Um, what about what about those missile racks, though? <clears throat> what about those those missile racks? So this the standardized for the missile racks and the missiles themselves. Yeah. Um, so you're gonna you're gonna have to have choices if you want in, on most ships with that have missiles. You'll have to have choices for less um, large missiles or more right, small missiles which is with really these modular cool. racks. Instead of being instead of being sort of pigeonholed into you can only have si four. Five size one missiles, or maybe you can yep. have like one size three bomb. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So that's gonna be really cool because then you have more variation for what your loadouts are, depending on what your missions are, or or what kind of ships you you are anticipating going up against, or what you think you you're gonna need. Um, so that's really cool being able to do that and and uh, having that sort of variation. Like, like everything else, right? The more customizability, the better. And being able to prepare like, yourself or whatever, you know. I think it actually makes less work for CIG as well. Because they, they've removed all the other missile launchers mm -hmm. that aren't proprietary. So obviously, like the um, Starfarer Gemini uh, or the, uh, the Constellations, they have their own proprietary missile launchers. Right, the yeah, ones that are and attached in, and have their own systems. Yeah, um, but, but, having... but these ones... These ones... They get rid of all the other ones other than these modular ones. If they ever need to change missiles for any reason, they only have to change one or two different launcher types because right. they're modular. Now, it's a lot less work for changes. I have a question for you, and I know we have CIG staff in the chat, so this might they might be able to answer us in there as well. But do you think this is going to open up the ability to move rockets over to oh. ships that normally don't have rockets? Because as a smaller weapon type, it may be, especially if you're going up against larger ships, right? Sometimes I would prefer to have rockets, you know, instead of instead of having missiles. I think they're more fun. Can, yeah, I, I think they're more fun too. I, I suspect or, there will there will be rocket pods available for hard points in general yes. as a weapon type. Yes. That's what I suspect they will do. Yeah, I just. They they kind of just made them for one ship, and that was kind of it. They never really did much think, more with them, but. I think they wanted to put rockets into the game, and they went, well, let's put them on for this for now, and then we can work out the rest of the weapons Yeah, later. we can figure I it out later. I suspect that the weapons we have at the moment are but a fraction of what we're going to have um, right. oh, definitely. in like a year's time. Because they just go, they can just bang out those weapons. Once, they, the, the, yeah. once they figure out the, all the different fire types, right? We know that those are changing, and they want to bring more of those in in the near future, like the, the plasma weapons on... The, the Van Duel ships and, and yeah. doing more things like what the electric shotgun does, but on a ship size or like just different things like that. Once they have all those in, then they can just start pumping out all the different weapons that, that do all the different types of damage. Same with the, the neutron cannons and the, uh, what, what are they, the Joker sucker punches and all these different weapon types. Once they're all sort of locked down and have all their mechanics working properly, then we're going to see a lot more of those coming in. Yeah, and then the last thing on missiles before we move on was they also talked about um, some size one missiles were like this big and some size one, one missiles yeah. were this big. So they standardized the actual size the actual of the missiles as well. Them. So now they can say, okay, a size one missile is this big and we're going to make it... Now they can make them all look unique art-wise. So like this type of missile... Because now you're going to start getting into in, in the hopefully near future... Um, you know, the missiles that you fire into asteroids from mining, the the hacking missiles and all different types. So being able to tell by looking at someone's ship what their loadout mm -hmm. is is also pretty important. So it's been a big kind of thing working actually, that out as well for CIG quite recently, that applying those style guides and those manufacturer guides to all the weapons and missiles and stuff. So they mm -hmm. have, have their own unique look and appearance, but you can also look at a missile and go, oh, that's probably from this manufacturer. Yeah. I, I, right. And I really like that. I think that's well, nice that's such rich. a big thing. Yeah, that's a huge yeah. thing in the game was the manufacturers and the lore behind every little thing and the detail they put into the game 
it, it goes into everything. It doesn't just go into the ships. It goes into the to the smallest bolt on the ship. They they're very very meticulous about that. These stuff. bolts and, were d- manufactured on Terra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I like that. Yeah, it's cool. They're crazy about it, and and I, I like that too. So they also talked about some gun changes as well, and I think we went into it a little bit, but um, they're kind of now that the flight models changed a bit, they they have to kind of. <laughs> probably have the weapons yeah there needs to be a little bit work more balance. as well like i said with and that missiles and, rebalanced and the shields and the armor and and so yeah everything yeah. has to so the, the the two things that they mentioned like really in detail were were the missiles the missile racks more than anything and the the guns and what one thing they described which i thought was really interesting was they they looked at fps loadouts Mm -hmm. and seem to kind of try and bring that to the ships so in an fps game you have like your sniper rifle your shotgun your smg your pistol and they seem to be kind of bringing those characteristics onto our ships now or at least being more conscious about doing it so certain like cannons are going to become your kind of sniper type weapon is at least at least least long range long range yeah so they're 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 talking about stuff like that. Uh, repeaters are gonna obviously be a high rate of fire weapon, so like a machine gun. Um, they also mentioned briefly that lasers might have more rapid fire than ballistic weapons. And, and then, then you've got your Gatling, which are very short range, yeah, like high high spread, yep, high rate of fire. So they're they're talking about all different kind of things. Um, with that, which I thought was pretty cool. And there'll obviously be trade-offs for each one. They didn't talk much about the trade-offs, though. Right. Uh, so, again, this is still all in their head type of thing, I think, is what it... I don't know if it's necessarily in the game yet. But they... Well, they're, they're trying to get this in for the game for the current set of weapons first, I think they said. Um, yeah. They want to, want to get that done. And, and for them, really, it's all about just possibly tweaking animation speeds, but almost entirely just numbers. They just have to change the numbers to make sure they're semi-balanced. Because balance is so important for when they release that 2.6 patch. Yeah. Right. Uh, moving forward, we have a quick Star Citizen HOTAS update. Um, uh, this play with sound in case you didn't see that. Okay. Give me one second here. You can. Uh, we can because do that. Um, basically, I'll give you, while you're getting that together, I'll give them yep. a preview, is... Sandy was on Nikki Batgirl's, one of her shows, and she asked Sandy about the HOTAS now that uh, Logitech bought SciTech. And Sandy's reaction was interesting. Now, every time I talk to Sandy, everybody wants to know about the SciTech deal and about when the HOTAS is coming. Well, something big happened, and... Pretty much Logitech is taking over Satech. So here's what Sandy had to say about the HOTUS. And folks, don't be upset. This had nothing to do with CIG. It had everything to do with Logitech and Satech. That's still in the, we don't have a solid word on what, where that leaves us. So as soon as that's all finalized and we know, then we'll let our, all our fans know. But right now it just happened and we don't have full detail of what's happening, so. Now my she looks questions really frustrated. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, with with that, it sounds like um, they're sort of left in the dark, obviously, it was, it was mm-hmm. a company acquisition, and we're, we're not sure what, they, what that means for any of the contracts that were made previously, or if they even need to uphold those things, or, or what's I going have on some, that. some, so it continues on a little longer. Okay. Uh, so I'll just stop you there real quick. They... She said she can't answer that question. It obviously has to go to legal, but they are that's something that they're going to try and figure out is if they have to uphold it or not. Um, so that's something that they're investigating and trying to figure out right. what what they're going to do with that stuff. So I just want to I just want yeah. a hotas with the word star citizen yeah. on. I had to make my own with a biro. I I had a feeling on. something like this could potentially happen because I think we talked about it before where. They, they went to Sci- They, I'm sure they went to SciTech. They went to Logitech. They went to Thrustmaster. They didn't just go to one. I'm sure they went to a bunch of different vendors, and they went with SciTech. And the reason they went with SciTech is because SciTech was willing to to make the 
take the gamble on them, basically, is, is what they made it seem like. Because they wanted to do something, just like with Star Citizen, they wanted them to do something crazy and I also and think ambitious. that CIG wanted a lot of control over it as well. Probably Perhaps. more than uh, more than other companies were willing to give, um, which is obviously what you want. You want as most, much control yeah. as possible when it's something right. with your name on it. Um, yeah. But this isn't necessarily bad for the HOTAS, whether it's going to take longer or even if they get a different company to do it. Um, the, the longer they wait, the better. Do you think it's going to happen still? Um, yeah, but I mean, there there has to be some possibility that it might not. Right. Well, of course there is. Of course yeah. there will be. It might. It, but I think that Logitech will want to establish themselves as a market leader in HOTAS and space games. And what better way to do that than make a amazing Star Citizen HOTAS? Yeah, for the space game, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that that would be my way of spinning it if I was a marketing person, anyway. Yeah. So I mean, I thought that was a little pretty interesting. That came out, I think, today. Um, I, I, hadn't, so, I hadn't seen that. That's the first time I'd seen that. So yeah, I so I, I grabbed that really quick and I tried to to get that up. The before we move on to the other stuff because it gets really cool. There also was a um, an interview. The second half of I, I guess no, you you yeah. Never mind. Never mind. We can we can talk about it a little bit later. I think you I'm actually talking about have Sean Tracy, aren't you? Yes. The game is yeah. yeah, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Okay. So. Next. Moving moving on to the UI update. I think this was my f- This this was really cool when I when I was watching my second favorite thing. Not only no okay, there was there's two parts of the UI and I I can't see cuz I have the video up ready to go, but I think okay. there, there was the Moby Glass stuff, but there was also like the menu stuff, like the main menu. So it was and the electronic that. access menu basically is I, it what, was what the, we saw a lot of. Well, we saw the whole menu for like the mm-hmm. the starting screen for a Star Citizen, yep. and we also saw all the Moby Glass stuff and and the customization. And we're gonna see it, but the colors, man. I know you're gonna you're gonna go with your blue board. Yep. Might go to yellow. I'm gonna go to red. I'm so excited. Woo! Yeah. For this. I didn't Anyways, expect something like that in. Yet. I didn't expect. I expected it in. Not yet. Yeah. Not as soon. As the problem is, it. is if you see someone in pvp using their moby glass and you see a yellow moby glass you're gonna see it you know yeah. that it's me yeah yeah <laughs> you know that it's me nobody else would use a yellow moby yeah, glass because yeah. it's weird <laughs> no. <laughs> but, it, but it is so but very much so people's eyes pick up different colors differently yeah. mm-hmm. um and obviously that's what why they need to change that ui so that people and, might and personal not have to see and personal preference so um, well, your yeah, personal thing, preference, but people won't see that blue on all backgrounds. We're looking at the Persistent so, Universe uh, menu right now, or did there for a second, and it's, so, it's just the it's not just text; it's more visual. It, it sort of matches the rest of the game and in, in how they're doing it. It feels. Yep. You talking about the me- the menus now and the, lo- uh, the loadout menus and stuff? Yes, Either the loadout menus. I'm talking about selecting whether you're going to the Persistent Universe or not. The options menus, all of this. I stuff. mean, that's. That's great. That looked a lot better. And again, with the with the loadout menus for for Star Marine, um, yeah. and the fact that they, they wait, 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 wait. I just noticed there. something. I just noticed something. Hang on one second. I don't know the Star Marine menu. The the watermelon helmet. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. Rox's watermelon helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna pause it here. I didn't. There it is, right there. Yeah. For those of you that haven't seen it, watermelon me- helmet. I wonder but you're if, also... yeah, I wonder if that's inspired by uh our favorite uh global moderator here, Process. Yeah. What's use? <laughs> lol, 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 lol. <laughs> oh shots. No, I <laughs> I think it's, it's obviously just a placeholder, but it is the funniest placeholder I hope, ever. I hope it stays in. <laughs> but but I, also... you know what? That would be the cool Okay, that should around. be the default helmet on the back seat of the dragonfly. <laughs> like the the <laughs> The passenger guy should have the watermelon helmet because you know the like you know how like the guy riding riding the motorcycle always has a really cool helmet, but then the the other person behind them has the nerdiest has the helmet lame, every time. Lamest helmet. Yeah. <laughs> but we also got to see a couple of other things just from this loadout customization. Now, obviously, this might have changed a lot since they they showed it or or whatever, or it might just be a a piece where there's lots of placeholders. But we saw there was two separate teams, Marines and Slavers, so we know the yes. names of the different. The teams you'll be fighting. So they're we like putting they were... into Arena Commander a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. But also we saw that there was class selection rather than just armor selection. Now, for for, for Arena Command, uh, for uh, Star Marine. Now I right. thought it was going to be literally choose your everything, choose your loadout. Yeah. 
but there looks to be the, your armor type and possibly your other um, loadout types are based on your class. So protector would be medium, scout would be light, um, and then you'd be able to customize your different helmets and auxiliary weapons, your grenades, all that sort of jazz. That's all obviously that stuff. just from these menus that might have changed. Just looking at the rework, uh, they've put so much thought into everything on how it's going to be arranged and how you can customize it yourself. So whatever information is important to you is the information that you're going to see. And I think that's really important. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm really excited to see it. And like you said, you can see it from a third person, just like everything else, just like what you see on your ship and all of that stuff. If you look, if you EVA up to the cockpit, you can see their HUD and, and everything that's going on with it. Very much with the Moby Glass, though, that is now just a, a super advanced phone. That is, yes. literally, you drag and drop yeah. your apps in. And that's what, they, that's what they wanted want. to do. That's super huge that you, because I, I, I put this in Info Runners too, that like when they said that, I was like, oh shit, because a guy like Soros is going to have completely different apps in his main section. Like his most used apps might be completely different than my most used apps. Right. You might have a bunch of mining stuff and things for, for currency mm -hmm. trade and whatever. I might have what the popular trade routes are being used. Yep. And like something that. Uh -oh. Star Citizen looks at quite heavily uh, and is trying to do is that is that immersion and try not to go to external websites, even the RSI website. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that's the reason for all those apps on the mobile class so that right. we can have the functionality of going to external websites almost for various different information types like you would with Eve online. Well, like you'd go to all these websites to get all this information. But you can do that through your mobile class because there's apps for it. On that so, well, point, need to go to on that point, they're even bringing in all of the leaderboards and everything from the website, so you yeah. don't need yeah. to leave. And that, that's a perfect example. But they're still going to yep. have it on the website, so you can check it on your phone or check it when you're not in the game. But you'll also be out there. They're tying all of that stuff and bringing that stuff into game uh, and having it in there uh, easier to find and things like that as well. Yeah, so uh, now all the leaderboard nerds don't have to alt tab anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and as... This becomes closer and closer to a completed game, right? It's important that those things are in there. Of course. And, of course. and uh, I'm just making jokes. I know you are. I mean, about I'm the guys that kill me constantly. To the stage of Star Citizen where we get a Moby Glass app for our actual phone and we can do lots of cool stuff on our phone um, with our accounts and things. And it affects in game a little bit. Like getting your loadouts ready and things. I love tweaking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, I thought I thought that was one of the coolest things. I'm still, um, I got my got my eye on other stuff. Yeah. Now um, that I that I liked better. Coming up for CitizenCon, they've announced what our Woo! next concept sail ship is going to be. Uh, mm -hmm. We've heard what, about this what, for a what while. What could that be? It's the RSI Polaris. It's the it's the new Corvette that takes over the original role of what the Idris was before the Idris blew up yes. to a frigate now with this uh they also announced the price which i'm i'm glad they did kind of surprised because usually they hold this back a little bit longer um oh, they usually do prices a week before a concept yep. sale so i'm but glad for they citizens did this. Con. um now we were yeah. we were speculating about this last week and we were right on the money um mm -hmm. it's uh, coming out sunday october 9th which is the day of the the event obviously they're going to show some stuff for it whatever they have, uh, whether it be concept art or a white box or whatever. Um, and it's going to have the introductory price of $750. And obviously, as all concept sales uh, come out, it will have LTI. Now, I want yep. I want to make this huge caveat before everybody's like, oh, that's too much or oh, that's whatever. All ships are too much and all ships are yes, completely are. optional. You do not need to purchase them. If you are not a part of an organization, I would suggest joining up with an organization because every single one of those orgs will have more have all ships, the ships. Will have big more ones, ships yeah. than players and will will have those because there are going to be those people that they just don't care and they're going to buy them, a.k.a. Clifford. So yeah. um, it's, it's important to remember uh, with the this capital ship as well. Uh, I believe this is the first capital ship that is not going to be stock limited. Right. It, it will be time limited. It will only be on concept sale for, I think, 10 days. Uh, but that there's infinite stock so they're, they're limited in the universe by the fact they're so bloody expensive yeah right, right. um so, the and and another thing is this is supposed to replace the idris like you said Soros. Yeah. and the idris was a thousand and this is 750 yes so while people are complaining about the price i think it really comes down to 
$750 is a lot of money for most middle class people and they really well, want I think it's, a, ship it's like a that. lot of money for anybody and I, I, I just want to make it very clear that it is optional you will be able to get it in the game one way or another uh, you I do have not, to have a Polaris you do not, it's not optional you do not need to purchase one um, yeah. and I can say right now I want I'm not gonna be purchasing one, especially for my oh. uh, 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 I won't be purchasing one for myself I may if buy it was a Drake for a ship, you would be. If, if that it, was the Drake, was a Drake Polaris, ship, fuck, I'd be poor. Yeah. So <laughs> if it, if it was if they, but I think that's what the the caterpillar is. So, yeah, but yeah, yeah. That being said, I think um, this isn't something I'm going to be interested in purchasing. It will be up there with the Idris and the Javelin with ships that I would like to acquire myself within the game and I think that's also healthy to, kn to know that you can you can do that and I, I just want to make sure that's very clear before people are like oh it's too much or oh it's whatever don't buy it if you don't have that money to just literally it. burn it's not worth purchasing uh, I uh I'm going to buy it <laughs> Dwork is gonna pick one up and and why uh, I'm gonna ask why is it something that you want to pick up because I'm a content creator, not because yeah. I want one or because I, right. I, I, I feel like I need something mm -hmm. like this uh, because I don't ha I, I didn't buy an Idris. I don't have anything like that. So when something like an Idris or something like that does come out, I don't have one to show off. Right. So I have to show it off to, to people and I have to show parts of the games off to people. So uh, I melted some ships. I have some store credit and I'm going to purchase one. So this so. is sim similar with me. I do have an Idris, but I'm thinking of melting the Idris and getting a Polaris and a Reclaimer and stuff like that. Um, well, yeah, yeah, and you can melt the Idris and then unmelt, right? So that's like the beauty of that unmelt stuff mm -hmm. now. Maybe. I mean, I don't want to piss off customer service. I've got quite a nice relationship with uh, Star Citizen. But it's, I don't, I don't but wanna... it's the unmelt. You don't have to. You melt and then you unmelt. There's no with unmelt the... over a thousand dollar. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, because I don't have any chips over a thousand. And, yeah. and I, I don't, because it's my choice. I don't want to keep on faffing around. And I think yeah. this is going to be the most expensive tradable ship. Yeah, because probably. I don't think there's been any ship above six, right? Mm, no, I think the most expensive yeah, right. was the A ninety jump, um, and that was six hundred before before the thousand dollar mark. So this is going to be the most uh, most expensive ship. So the other thing too is keep your eyes out not only on on streamers and YouTubers because there may be giveaways of this ship in the future. Oh shit! That was our own personal NDA, you monster. I'm not saying it's coming <laughs> from us. I'm just saying it's it's I, and and to That's be honest, good. there's 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 uh, just look at content creators in general um, because I'm sure that you there'll be at least one of these out there. Anyways. Um, yeah, so moving on <laughs> to the next thing, we saw the Constellation Aquila for the first time. And man, it looked cool with the the thing in the front popped the out. Scanner, and, and they, oh, they talked about it right after they talked about scanning. It was yeah. cool. So It I was have, really cool. I have a, a Giphy Cat here of it, and you can see the scanner popped up in the front, and it looks glorious. So is that a utility mount then for the, that, that radar zombie thing? Well, the, it like, looks like it replaces where that turret goes right there. So if yeah, and that was supposed the... to be the science station on the initial sta uh, sale. It still might be a science station. What a science station does, I don't know. Okay. Uh, is this coming out? This doesn't come out in two six. This comes with three zero, I think. Right. We, we don't. We don't. We don't really know, know. Right. The the Aquila uh, and it the Carrick. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So they they were saying stuff about the Aquila and the Carrick, both well, saying, "Well, they will be ready at similar times." I think we have. They might yeah. be ready at similar Once times. Again, I can't see one any. will be low enough for the other. I can't see anything because I have this up, but um, I, we're going to talk about scanning. Obviously, I think this is something that's going to come in with the scanning mechanic. Okay. Right, because all like the scanning they showed was pretty in depth with that, and I don't know how ready this is. Um, and like you said, it looks oh, like it's, it's not. It, it's first pass. Yeah, it, it's definitely first pass. It might come in with a scanning mechanic. It may not. Um, but we do know that they are working on that uh, the scanning mechanic and, and how important it is to ships like the Aquila for uh, exploration and science. Let's, 
let's quickly go to the scanning. But before we go, um, buyback token was on Monday. So if you guys were waiting for a buyback token to unmelt something for store credit, yep. it was in your account on October 3rd. Do you, have, um, do you have a so time set for the scanning stuff on the video? I don't have a video in here or any scanning stuff in here. What? Yeah. I never put it in. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, okay, okay, I'll get a video for Some you. Some of us remember the scanning stuff. I remember the scanning stuff, too, but I'll get the video for you I right now. I really see a lot of it, so. Don't worry. I got you back. Thanks, man. Um, I can't believe I didn't put person i that am that was like I'm one a of terrible the big, person no it's all good that was, the, it was, that was my favorite things. thing out of everything it was like the biggest thing um, oh yeah so uh, while we're getting that in there it's gonna go in skype chat okay because rtv combined with the atv on scanning there was it's quite a lot of information yeah yeah, it was it was awesome. And RTV they went nuts on the scanning. Mm -hmm. The so much so that I I was talking in my chat that I enjoyed watching that so much that I was like kind of like I want to be a game designer. Because he just sat there and had but I can maybe do this and I can maybe do that and how how cool would it be if we did this and how cool that would it guy. be if we did that? The guy that I can't remember the name of with the beard that looks a little bit like Captain Flint. Um, a little bit like Captain uh, Flint? <laughs> Jesus a lot of bit Christ. Like Captain Flint. I was like, who is that guy? And why why does he look exactly like Captain Flint? <laughs> why is he skinned Captain Flint and wearing it? Um, no, so he is a really, really great dev, it seems. But he seems to literate that very well. He He's very... I got he it. Explain himself so well what he's doing, how he's doing it why he's doing it he's been it's on loads clear. of different projects yes very clear and concise and explains it to a way as if he knows that i'm a child mm -hmm. but, yeah <laughs> but gives a load of detail with it as well now, and well he I knows really the like community that. are children it was it was the, yeah. the other yeah. thing too Sometimes, is that's you know? important and i don't want to forget is the scanning was also for the fps stuff so you could scan the players which is what they were just showing right now in the ui work in progress stuff well, and if so, you look at the top left, it, there's a progress percentage. That's for, scanning. Yes. Yeah. So, so th let's differentiate radar from scanning. Yeah. They're two separate things that they kind of splodged together in this post. Right. Um, so radar is literally the detection of the entity right. in the first place. So you're going, that's detected. But they still, that's have, detected. To, they have to still use the scan mechanic to use the radar, is what... Well, well no, no. So the scanning mechanic grabs data from after you've like, yeah. kind of grabbed it. So the active ping, that's a radar thing. Right. right. And the, the scanner is the thing that grabs the data from it and grabs scans the it. the information as a and, and but they, tells you who that but, player is and, and what yes. their name is and all that other information. But then you're also passively scanning at the same time. So if somebody's close enough that you can see them, not scanning, but your radar will bring up at least information on the player like like, there was a little triangle on the guy that was close to him. He might not have had to ping to see that. Right. The guy that was really far away, he has to ping and, and do the little golf swing mechanic right. to burst uh, some scan or whatever in that area and get Yeah, and, uh, and a that's more passive radar and maybe a little bit right. of passive scanning. Not sure how the, the actual scanning mechanic will 100% work because they didn't really super elaborate other than, other than the longer mm -hmm. you've targeted something, the more information you'll get on it passively. Yeah. The and and the, the information that they can put in is endless. Uh, the the yeah. things that are running through my mind, they, they mentioned a few things in boredom. I'm, I'm sure you'll remember a few too. Uh, on ships, the wanted level, how many people are on it per, potentially, what uh, cargo they're holding. I, I can, uh, there's just... Affiliation of the ship. Um, yep who the pilot is, individual passengers, the owner, shield health, weapon health, item yep. health, um, loads and loads and loads of different things. But the joy of that as well is that individual items on ships can be hardened against scanning. Yes. Because well, just as with everything in Star Citizen, they want two sides to every mechanic, right? Mm -hmm. the, the person who's doing it and then the person who's trying not to have it done to them. Right. You know? Um, there, there, a few people are talking in the chat. Well, the golf swing is not everything in this was very first implementation, and I thought it was really cool that they were even willing to show it very for, like first first implementation. I thought that was awesome. 
for me personally, I think a lot of the community hated the golf swing mechanic. Well, I love the golf swing mechanic. I think it makes perfect sense. <laughs> I love sense. golf games. I love it. I know. It's just not even that. It just it makes sense for what they're trying to do. The The whole thing is it's a it's a ping where you're you're shooting a, a high level of scanning power mm-hmm. in one area. And it just it, it just for for me, you, you can tell that they they had a power bar, it seemed like. And then the scanning mechanic. Right. So they want to gamify with, it. The, yeah. Right. And it has to be gamified because it should be a, a situation where and they discuss this a bit on RTV where if you don't if you don't do it right and you over scan um, you're going to get seen easier. It's going to be like, well, you, boom. Might right. bl- you might blind your sensors. You might overload your yeah, radar. There's a lot so of things that can do with that. And you it, can, it you makes can it ruin your radar or you can also give your position away if you do it incorrectly. It also makes so, it so you're not just awesome. scamming, like spamming a key to continue scanning or whatever. Like it's something you need to pay attention to and, and sort of get used to that mechanic. And as you use it, it, it's a real life skill that you're going to need yeah. to do for your timing and everything. And it needs to be on. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and then, that's the idea of it. The, it's an active ping system. And this right. is just for the active ping system. First implementation, and it's not fleshed out. There is going to be loads of extra bits fleshed out for, for this. And because the golf swing there is just to really show that this profession, the scan operator, will require some form of skill. That, that They're, they're going to add more and more bits to it. So what we've seen here is really just for like the dogfighter combat base of it a single right. seater kind of i'm going to ping a ship with an extra long like radar blast um and just gives you a longer radar effectively it's from what i can see that the implementation they're showing with the golf swing um and then um matt sherman popped in the chat because this he's they're working together on this um mm-hmm. because he's i think he's one of the designers on the herald too so it might have something to do with that uh he said yeah scanning is going to have a ton of little hooks uh that we can work uh, into lots of other systems, which of course, because every system in game has some form of like almost every system is you're gonna have to scan something, right? Um, and then he said that's still being worked out. I don't know who he's responding to. He says that's still being worked out. Will mentions an Intel slash info system during RTV that I've also been working on, which will also be determining some of those things. So that's pretty awesome. And yeah, I mean just. Uh-huh. Everything involves scanning, so I'm happy to see that they're working on it now because it will bring other mechanics in. Mm -hmm. I love the idea that you're going to be scanning stuff as a scan operator. And obviously you can scan cross-section, IR, and EM. Those are the sort of three major things you're seeing. Mm -hmm. So the cross-section is literally real-time 3D. When you hit a target, it will show you the cross-section as your ship can see it. So based on the angle of the ship that you're scanning, you're going to have to have quite a clever brain to work out what that ship is. Yeah, And that's going to be a skill in itself, as well as determining the <clears throat> other, like, you see an IR and an EM signature, and how much it is, and, and that CS. You can go, that's probably a Carrick. If you're a good scan operator, you can read all those metrics, and instantly make a decision what ship that is. You I think it'll that. be that detailed? I think that people will get I think that it'll, good at it. it'll say, Carrick. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Or you'll I, see I, the shape of it. Yeah, but that's, that's what the cross-section is. If the cross, if it's facing directly towards you, and you ping it, and it's behind you will see the cross-section of it facing towards you, though. Yeah. You'll and, it's, it and it's up to you to, to know what the cross-section what looks like. Yeah. That's if indeed, that's what it, that if indeed you get happen. a cross-section. That information. You might, you might that is pick, really cool. The other thing is, there may be some it. sort of mechanic where they can spoof cross-sections or change it slightly, yes. right, with their It'll armor or shields, right? So then you... You see what is supposed to be a Carrick, but then it looks like a, a Gladius, or it looks like a, uh, maybe a Reliant or something like that. And it's like, oh, or maybe it's fuzzy or static or whatever. We don't know exactly yeah, how it's going to... launched a load of chaff, and it's just like a big cloud. The other th- yeah, the other thing, too, is, right, because they said, uh, and they said this before, as things are further away and stuff like that, some things are going to scan, and it's going to look like a ship, and it's going to be nothing, right? It's just going to be... Yeah. It'll be an asteroid or it'll be something else that, that is messing with your scanners. It depends on what your scanners are like and, and all this other stuff. So we kind of have to wait and see uh, what that's going to look like. I, I liked in RTV, they talked about um, asteroids uh, as well for the scanning mechanics. So um, obviously, if you break line of sight where you're trying to scan something or ping something, that you might not be able to see it. It's going to create, there's going to be noise in space. But 
Um, you'll also be able to scan these astral bodies in the same way. Yeah. So you they have EM and IR signatures, but they 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 kind of did a comparison of three ships looking at an asteroid, and a Hornet looks at an asteroid and goes, "Yes, that's an asteroid." Uh, and a Carrick will look at it, and it will get various other data on the asteroid as well. It will know where the mm -hmm. asteroid came from, the history of the asteroid, and some basic mineral information. And then the Prospector will look at the asteroid, and it will know all the best spots to land, where the gold is, what is going there, where to mine, and that sort of stuff. And I love the fact that you might get that, that amount of information on scanners. That's, like, really exciting to me. For some yeah. reason, I'm such a nerd. No, I mean... It's, it's, it's exciting it's, to everybody yeah. because it's such a big mechanic. Oh, th this is something that is necessary for everybody who's interested in the game that's not super interested in combat, right? And we know that from their their polls and things like that, that that's something that a lot of people are interested in. So it's important that they get it right, but it's also important that they gamify everything and make it fun and make it a skill thing. And, and you know, I think that CIG is not wanting it to be something that you can just macro to a single button and it's all done and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, although I think it may, people may still be able to do that. Um, we'll see how, how all of this goes. I'm really excited. They always they, figure it Yeah, out it ways. looks amazing. Uh, the way that they have it all implemented and the way that they've explained it is, is really, really cool. Now, moving on to the next thing here. Uh, the Nexus, our Gamers Nexus came out at us with another awesome uh, two-part video. Right, with Sean Tracy on the 64-bit engine tech and procedural en edge blending. I have some video here. I haven't seen this at all yet. Um, but if uh, I'm going to pull up the video here, and if you want to uh, start talking about the big points that were, were talked about, that would be fantastic. So yeah. in that one, um, Sean Tracy talks about 16-bit precision. Um, and basically, they needed 16-bit pr precision. 16-bit precision so that they could have more things in the universe more space to work with um, and it gives them 18 quintillion um, as a limit for, for things for space for for, for um, uh, positioning and stuff um, and you might remember that number because it's from no man's sky no man's sky can have 18 quintillion planets because that's the upper limit of uh, the floating point of 64 the floating bit precision. Of 64 yeah. Bits. yeah. So basically the 64 precision stuff doesn't make the game any faster or anything. It's not for performance. It is literally to give them uh, the ability to do more it's, and to have larger spaces. Yeah, sort of physical size within the game. Yeah, yeah. And it's as simple as that. So he talks a, a bit about that more technically. Um, then they talk in, go into biomes and edge blending. So this is where uh, multiple biomes, where they meet, Right. whether it's just one or three or whatever, um, the, the, the engine auto-blends them pretty well. Um, so right. that, so like, this is something plants. like jungle going into desert. It's not just the line and the grass is ending and then whatever, and then yeah. they'd have to go through and manually do that. It's something well, that they... Well, in some situations, they, they might will. have to. Right. So it does blend it pretty well, but there'll be some situations where it doesn't. Because like when like eight different biomes meet with a city and a jungle and a forest, it might not create a, the correct scene. Right, yeah. Um, but it's, it's pretty good in most situations. Yeah, so a, a, I guess we could call those edge cases, for lack of a better term. Uh, edge yeah. cases yeah, where they have all those different things. But yeah, so like what I would mean is when you see in real life, when you see a jungle go to desert um, or to like plains or whatever, you sort of see there's the trees sort of, you know, become more sparse and there's more yeah. sand and whatever. And yeah, I mean, it's cool. Same with like snow biomes or or... Uh, and whatever very like, much those are the ones I can think of. Very much in Star Citizen, they want to, you to be able to look at something and not think it's been copied and pasted or it's a computer game. Right. And yeah. obviously in the 3.0 demo, everything was effectively one texture. Um, so yeah. they, they, they didn't have this problem. They didn't have that was didn't a moon. Edge and, and some yeah, planets one or, or, or so are, some of the planetoids or moons are going to be like that, where it is just like our moon is just like a rocky, dusty planet or like Mars or whatever. But they'll you know, still be packed with stuff, probably, rounds. whether that be salvage or right. um, pirate bases or something like that. There'll be stuff there. Right. And um, we saw with the last ATV, I believe it was the last one, where they were showing those little buildings and things like that. They're, they're going to be spreading throughout mm -hmm. the planets that you'll be able to find and explore and, and things as well. Yeah. Cool. Board, board is... It was a very technical article. It was a little over my head. Or not article, but interview. I'm sorry. 
There's an article as well. Needs to, um, well, yeah, there is an article as well. Needs to have done a little article as well. Uh, I mean, it was it was reasonably technical. It's more technical than they normally go into in yeah. their basic interviews. But if you're interested in that sort of stuff, if you're they they do explain bits and bobs like it, it does explain in the article that floating limit and it compares it to No Man's Sky and stuff like that. That's where I got that No Man's right. Sky comparison from. Um, and I went, oh god, yeah, it is the same number. Um, but you that number is going to be used a lot in gaming over the next few years because. Right. Games are going to start to go, well, we all need 16-bit precision for, for, for this stuff, for positioning, um, and we need the upper limit of that. So you're going to hear yeah. that number a lot um, yep. until we need and more. It, the other and thing that was, is, it's paving it. was talked about was that uh, Star Engine is now a thing. I think that's sort of the name that they're going with. Uh, it's lots of modules working independently and some they don't really use, but might in the future... Yeah, so they decided not to delete any of the original CryEngine modules because they might use them in the future, basically. Yeah. They, right. they went, well, we've got them there. We could delete them. There's no need to. So right. they've got lots of extra functionality they might use in the future with the CryEngine. They can build it into lots of different things, which for me is great because I think that this might actually be a simulation engine that lots of other games use, whether yep. or not they're just on a single planet, whether right. they're not using it for a strategy game. They could, there's loads of different uses you could use this. And it just for. it allows more functionality for all of that stuff. So it, once again, it, because they, they bought it and are free to do with what they want with it, they could mm -hmm. give it out to other developers. Or it could also affect, the, and this is something that I don't think a lot of people maybe thought of, is when modding comes in down the line, you know, we know that modders make games out of other games that just don't make any sense that it orig originally wasn't uh, able to do. And this might make it easier for them to, to work on those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's a, that's a good point. Who knows? They might uh, make like, some sort of RTS out of the, it or something. The tool sets that Star Citizen have made for themselves, the long-term thinking allowing them to do lots of cool stuff, like even, it, it, you see it in all their mechanics, you see it in the, the flight model and stuff. They can just take, change the numbers now. Right. That's all they need to do. They don't need to redo the flight model. But these tools, that like Planet Ed and these extra <laughs> modules and all the stuff for the Star Engine that the, the designers are using, when they make them more user-friendly, modders are going to get their hands on them eventually, and they're going to be able to do amazing things. Yeah. It's, oh, it excites me so much. My own little universe. My little universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. It is exciting. Uh, yeah. I just... Oh, man. I can't... So... Citizen Con, guys. Woo! Yep. Woo! Woo! I, I really hope I can go, but if I can't, I'm going to find a way to watch it somewhere. Um... Whether I have it, to drive around. That's right. That's right, Twerk. We're streaming. Well, no, I'm, if I don't have power, I probably don't have internet. Oh, shit. So, the, um, I don't know. I'm really, I'm really excited. Like, obviously, WTF, you're going out there a little early. Yep. You want to talk about yeah, maybe so, a little bit what's um, going to go on? If you guys aren't aware, and I'm sure everybody's aware at this point, um, I'm going to be streaming from uh, the CIG LA office. On Friday and Saturday, those are going to start at 12 p.m. Pacific and go till 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, it's going to be a similar format to what we were doing or what CIG did with Gamescom, where we're going to have uh, two streamers working together, a primary and a secondary, with uh, a staff member probably with us as well. Um, and so it's myself, uh, Sophie Girl, Sergeant Gamble, and Captain Flint, and we're going to be taking shift work for that. Um, I can't announce the schedule because it's not something that's set in stone. Um, but definitely come check us out. That's going to be on twitch.tv slash star citizen. So if you're not following them, um, I'm going to throw that link in chat, make it nice and easy. I for did you already. Torque's going to do it for me and, uh, <laughs> make sure you go follow that. I'll be hosting it here. I'm sure everybody's who's not going to be streaming at that point in time. will be hosting it and, uh, we'll be doing giveaways and all the same cool stuff. That, I'm gonna stream while you're for... streaming. I'm gonna I'm gonna get more viewers. I'm gonna vampire your views. You're vampire. My <laughs> suggestion is start nah, streaming. I won't. If, if you don't end up going, start streaming before, right before we're done, and then vampire them. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's really cool. Really looking forward to meeting everybody. Um, I know that uh, us as a podcast and, and a stream team, we're gonna have uh, little goodies for you guys if you come up to us and say. Hey, I love the Redacted podcast. Come up to one of us and say that, and we'll have something for you. Uh, whether it be me, I know Board Gamer unfortunately can't make it, 
But if, if Twerk can't make it, come find me or any of the redacted team members. Uh, and hopefully Twerk can make it there as well. But yeah. we're going to have some little little uh, goodies for you to take home. Um, and I think that's pretty much it uh, for the stream stuff. Um, what do you think we are going to see at CitizenCon? Well, 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 before we move on to CitizenCon, I just want to say oh. happy birthday to uh, Operation Pitchfork. Oh. It's third, third year today. Happy birthday, Operation Pitchfork. And for anyone that doesn't know what Operation Pitchfork is, it's sort of like the, the first player-discussed um, event that's going to be happening in-game uh, during beta, just before the game goes live. Uh, everyone is going to get all of their ships and attack all the Vandal in Vandal space. Is the idea. Um, so join in with that. Yeah. Um, so CitizenCon, what do you think we're going to see? Obviously, we're going to see the Polaris. We know that that's sort of been announced. Um, we, we know a lot of the things we're definitely going to right. see. Polaris, um, okay, the so Homestead let's, demo. Let's just talk about what we know we're going to see instead of getting people hyped up yeah. for something that may not exist. We can get them hyped up, we can get them hyped up afterwards, but let's, right. let's clear up what we're definitely going to see first, and then we can, we can talk about yeah. what we might see. So Polaris going on sale. Boom. Right. Uh, and also some other ships going on sale, but we don't know which ones. Um, but that's just going to be some limited ships that we that have already been on sale. Uh, most of the other limited ships will go on sale in the uh, mid-November kind of anniversary live stream. Right. Um, we're going to see the Homestead demo, which is Planet's version 2.0 kind of showcase of exactly what they can do with planet creation, um, biomes, weather, all that sort of jazz. So we're thinking that's going to be maybe... Uh, a video on a, on how they can do the planet creation and then them walking around on a planet um, seeing all the different flora and fauna. That's what we assume. Is, is that what we assume? Or is that what I assume from Homestead Demo? I'm just going to do this until someone else's. I think I'm, I'm going to... S- <sighs> okay. So, yeah, I think that's what it's going to be. I don't think... I mean, maybe we see the... It might the... be all sort of bundled into one sort of thing with the planet side they, they could be i think we see, might I, see, I, I was gonna say i think we might see the the little houses that they were building perhaps yes yeah. a little bit of that i yeah, think we oh, might I... see a lot more than that i think we might see the, the the much larger scale of that so i'm thinking that we're in my head they'll they'll show a video like they do with the tech with behind um uh animal bishop's face they say this is how a planet is made so they show us how a planet's made from a designer's point of view and then they'll go into that planet through a live demo going, this is cool. You can run around, look at the trees. I've blown up a tree. Look at the buildings that we have. Ooh, cool buildings. Animal, look at this animal. It's a Ooh. chipmunk. It's a, an animal that could exist, not Sean Murray's animal of lies. That sort of <laughs> stuff. So um, that's what I'm hoping for that Homestead demo. I know it's going to be a showcase of the, the, what planets can do but might not necessarily be a planet that ever exists in the verse and might not necessarily be exactly what we get in 3.0. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I got lost a little bit because I was handling some things in the chat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, was, sorry. I was trying to do the same thing too, so I apologize. I pulled a board gamer. Yeah. <laughs> what were we talking about? What? What? <laughs> um, what? I think it's now time to move on to questions. Um, if anybody has a question for us in the chat, exclamation point question, remember that we do have two large giveaways that are happening. Uh, mm. one in association with our sponsor, uh, Antlion Audio and Mod Mic, uh, exclamation point headset in chat for information on that and how to enter. And then we also have one for redacted exclamation point monthly in chat for that as well. Before we answer these questions, I'm, yes. we haven't finished this fucking one you asked first. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So- yeah, we're also going to see Squadron 42 mission. We know oh, that. Oh, right. That's yes. big. The Squadron Do you think 42. it's going to be an actual Squadron 42 mission or a mission they put together to not spoil anything? Actual Squadron 42 mission not finished. Do you think... So I think they're going to add more. I think, okay. it, uh, I think it might be a, a playable demo. Yeah. I think it might be a demo that they release... Prelude demo. ...to yeah. everybody to just sort of be like, hey, here's a demo of what Squadron 42 is going to be like. This is a menu that we are uh, uh, a mission that we have for you guys to to try it out. Um, 
that might, that might be a good idea because people have talked about the possibility being a prelude to Squadron mm-hmm. Forty Two. Chris is old school. Maybe he's going back to demos. Yeah, and just saying this is a prelude demo. Boom, play this. Yeah. How good our game is. Buy it. Bow, pew, 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 get finger guns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know. I'm. I'm. I, we talked about it a bit last week, like the fact that they were doing a Squadron Forty Two mission. I'm just really Exciting. excited to see what it's going to yeah. look like, and uh, the fact that it's going to be seamless. That it's are gonna we going to be... see a Vandal, or you know, like what? Are, what are we going to see? That you're going to you're going to wake up or whatever. You're going to be on your ship. You're going to go to your briefing. Going to go to your actually ship, and then you're going to go to your mission seamlessly mm. without loading. That's cool. That's yeah. anticipation building for, for the sure. mission. That's I love that idea. You're in an ba- episode of Battlestar Galactica. That's a win. It's all the win. All the win. <laughs> mm. Is there anything else that we want to uh, discuss before moving on to questions then? Well, uh, only, only what you think else might be at CitizenCon. So well, that's uh, what we know is going to be there. What we think. Um, I would like to see more of the FPS mechanics. Uh, I know a lot of people are waiting on that, especially with the... 2.6 being the next major patch. Um, I would love to see them play it. I would love to see them play it. I would love to see things like yeah. them throwing grenades or melee or mm-hmm. the a grenade. Cover That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Seeing and, a grenade yeah. and seeing three people die. Mm. Yep. Seeing the grenades, maybe seeing any of the uh, gadgets that they have, uh, melee weapons, different assortment of weapons, and and armor working, and and being able to turn on and off uh, gravity. Um, I know some of those mechanics are kind of in. Like right now the the gravity thing sort of works at Grimhex. Like when you go through an airlock, when you're cycling the airlock, yeah. it turns gravity off. So mm-hmm. I don't know if how they implemented that, um, but I imagine it's implemented in a way that just like a switch on a station, you'd be able to do that, and it just turns gravity off for that whole physics grid. So, I mean, those are, those are the things that I can really think of that we know aren't going to be there. Obviously, they're going to show spaceships, they're going to show some more planetary stuff. They they hype that up voice, during Gamescom. They may show a voice bo- over IP. Voice com stuff. They that. might show a new website stuff, right? Yes, the they, communication platform with Orgs 2.0 is what yeah, a lot they of might are they for. might broadside us with with all the new org changes, um, mm-hmm. and website changes, and that would be awesome. But uh, it, I think it's kind of hard to speculate on some of those things when. We know all of the stuff that they're going to show, and that's going to be a lot. And it's going to be a lot for them to show within, you know, what their normal presentation time is, whether it be two hours or, or whatever, and even adding yeah. on more to that. So who knows? Hopefully it's it's a, a three or four hour presentation that we get to sit there and be super uh, stoked about. Um, I mean, I die. I know. Everybody's going to be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> really? It would be crazy. Just for a second time there. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, it's, once it's gonna be awesome. Once again, guys! Sure. Exclamation point! Question in chat! Exclamation point! Headset in chat! And exclamation point! Monthly in chat! Uh, for those giveaways, and if you have a question for us to, uh, if you have a question to ask, whether it be about our channel, about CitizenCon, about the game, about the podcast, or why board gamers' head is just so shiny. I'm like an egg. Um, okay, so I am going to jump into questions now. And our first one is from Steve J1397. And this one is more directed towards, I think, me and Twerk. Do you think that you're getting more subscriptions now because of the announcement of Twitch Prime at uh, TwitchCon? I don't think I know, yeah. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Uh, I've seen a huge uptick in that, especially with, uh, and for those of you that don't know, uh, what it is is when twi- when you uh, associate your Twitch account to Amazon Prime, you get a free subscription to any channel on Twitch. And the first month of Amazon Prime right now is free. So obviously we're all going to see a lot of that. And if you're a student, I believe it's, it's half price or you get like the first six months for free uh, kind of thing. So if you haven't looked into that, definitely if you have Amazon Prime already, associate that. You're going to get a free... Uh, free subscription to whatever channel you want, as well as a bunch of other perks like uh, exclusive game skins, game codes, and uh, other cool stuff in there. They mm-hmm. announced that there was one. That was one of the announcements that they made. I know Board Gamer said you're going to do a video on that uh, yep. coming up Probably in the near tomorrow. future. Um, so keep your eyes peeled on Board Gamer's channel. Uh, and it's oh, a, any animal facts you want. 
I just I do quite a lot of animal facts, mainly about Star Citizen. I don't even know my own commands. Maybe Anna's just being slow. I'm nope, actually trying to figure out one. how to subscribe right now with it to tell people, and it's not that intuitive. Yes. So <laughs> once we have that figured out, we'll... like if you click. I'm on the thing, and I'm saying subscribe free, and then it just brings me to Twitch. Yeah. Where? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe no, 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 you, so maybe what you need to do, you go, in, you go into your mate's channel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, after you've associated, you've associated your Amazon yeah. Prime account, yeah? You go into the Twitch channel, oh, click on top. subscribe, yeah, and then free. Free Got sub. Bang. There you go. Very cool. You should see what that means. Uh, our I next... just subbed the gold glove for calling me out on. Nice on Twitter. Uh, Magnetron GW2 asks: With more and more hype around this game, when do you guys expect when CIG is fixing their Mustang clipping and a lot of the other clipping going on? Should be should be being fixed very 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 soon. We saw um, a uh, bug smashes pretty much about similar stuff, and mm -hmm. he even talks about that. Um, I'd hope to see it fixed in. 2.6, almost certainly the 3.0. Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot more of the clipping issues and, and stuff like that being fixed as we move into more and more of these mechanics coming in uh, because it is something that is important even as an alpha or a beta or whatever uh, stage we go into. Um, it, it's important, right? Like when, Especially with the Mustang uh, being a starter ship and that's the only ship a lot of people have. I think that's very much on their radar, and they want to get that fixed um, sooner rather than later. Lion Star Star Citizen asks, "Do you guys think 2.6 will be out after the weekend or CitizenCon?" No, I, I think it'll be. They said sometime after CitizenCon. They yeah, they said right? they're they're aiming for sometime in October. Aiming for sometime after CitizenCon. I, I, I suspect we'll we'll see them get those flight model changes done first. Mm -hmm. And then it really sounds like that there's going to be another patch in between. Flight model, so. then 2.6. Yeah. yeah. See. So, uh, yeah, well, it sounds like we're going to get that flight model, maybe a couple ships in the game, and then they will do 2.6 uh, and bring in all the FPS mechanics and all of that other stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Ubernerd asks, do you think that disabled ships with living pilots at the conclusion of a battle should be more common than exploding ships and dead pilots? With death of a spaceman's mechanic, it just seems uh, that within weeks of official launch, half of the verse will already be on their second character. <laughs> um, uh, definitely with the larger ships, yeah, I think you're, you're much more likely to have a pilot just go, well, my ship's destroyed, I can just leave. But ejection seats in most ships, there's going to be lots of systems that allow you to escape in time. Even if it's a Drake ship and you have to jump out the airlock, you're not going to just go, die, so I'm going to without use, a warning. I'm going to use the analogy of a car to a spaceship because I think that works really well. I think that if you blew off all the wheels of a car and you disabled it or whatever, so say the thrusters or something like that, those don't cause explosions that that doesn't whatever and same with with whatever it, it might have to be you have to target a specific system or or hit it in a certain way or hit it with a se yep. certain type of ammunition to actually make that ship explode because and we know we're going to have closer and slower right and we that. know we're going to have things like uh not just being able to eject out of a ship but life pods and things like that and we're being able to repair all those mechanics need to work and, and need to be gamified in a way that it actually makes sense. Because if you're just going around shooting at ships and they're instantly blowing up, there's no reason for the repair mechanic. There's no reason for the life pods because everybody's just going to die anyways. So I think as things come in and it gets more and more detailed, we're going to see more of that sort of come into the game. But right now, those, those mechanics aren't really in where it knows what systems... Because we don't have all those interchangeable systems like the CPU and the engines and, and stuff like that with item 2.0 quite yet. Um, our next question here is from Deltron 3030. With the ships being, or the ship speeds being slower, wouldn't the Hornet, uh, the Hornet will be more OP since no one can dodge or avoid it? Well, no, we discussed that um, 
your accelerations aren't are are going to go higher or stay the same. So the the ship will fly slower. Its top speed will be slower, but ships will be more maneuverable. So maneuverable ships are like let's say an M50 or uh, I don't know a um, Saber. Let's a Saber. Saber versus Hornet. Yeah, the Saber's more maneuverable. I'm even talking about uh, the the Gian Scout, right? Yeah. Like a crazy, like a ship that's supposed to be crazy maneuverable. Those are, are that's where the trade-offs are going to happen. But so. yeah, if they didn't edit the weapons or do any more balance, the Hornet would probably win in those engagements. But they are, however, mm-hmm. rebalancing the weapons and the health and the shield yeah. and everything. So everything's getting rebalanced anyway. Right. And yeah, as Twerk said, the agility of the ships. That's going to be a massive factor. You're going to be able to dance around the Hornet if it's if you're closer all the time. Just stay behind him. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, our next question from Grit Spinner. CIG hasn't said much recently regarding the new shield visualization tech that is supposed to contour the ship more or less than a bubble that it does now. I would imagine that they want that for Squadron 42. Do you think we'll see that in 2.6 or 3.0? Have you heard anything new about it? The item system 2.0 will need to fully come out before they do stuff like that. Because that I think will be that's based 3.0. On Yes, so yeah. it will have to be at three O or onwards, at least. Um, but I, I don't think it's like a major. Maybe it is. Maybe that's why they're doing all the shields now. We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like I said, it's, <laughs> it's mostly speculation on our part, and that goes for all these questions, guys. If we don't know for sure and we can't provide a source for it, then it's usually just speculation. We don't work for CIG. Uh, yeah, they usually have a source, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, occasionally Matt Sherman or someone's from CIG's in the chat, and we just we just go on, we'll go off on a tangent until he stops us. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Uh, Mr. Yellow asks, I did watch a video before about ship weapon loadout. Do you think it's better to give ships a minimum hard point size of two and then put their fixed size two gun or gimbaled size one? Or so there's always a choice to have some or all weapons gimbaled or locked in place on the game style. I don't think so, and this is coming from someone who uses gimbals. I don't think mm-hmm. you should have gimbal size two and hard po- fixed size two weapons as the same hard size point because everybody would just switch to gimbaled. I think at that point, um, and and they've done that balance for the reason of you know it. It's one of the choices that you need to make in between your weapons. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I, I think the way that it works right now with the gimbals, having, having those uh, options is necessary. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, unless they can think of another clever way of doing it. I mean, controller disparity is always something that people are going to worry about um, mm-hmm. and complain about unless they use both controllers and are equally skilled with both controllers. That's the only real reason, that's the only time you can really get a good comparison right. of whether mouse gimbals is better or worse than joystick with fixed weapons. Um, and I think the true thing is, is that CIG are relatively uh, controller agnostic, which is good, um, but that does make it hard for balance. And I'm not sure that if there is any truly better control system, there might be a perfect setup per ship um, where a joystick is definitely better with this, with fixed weapons, or, um, mm-hmm. or gimbals is definitely better with this ship. But Star Citizen is all about like lots of differences and dealing with your opponent's particular loadout. So <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Who knows? Who um... knows? Solus Phantom asks, do you think we'll see less than lethal weapons before full release? Yes, most definitely. Uh, like yeah, the Sucker yeah. Punch. Um, they're in, they're just not... They're just they need not, to be reworked. Yeah, right. Distortion uh, damage I, just I would, to work. I would call the EMP pulse uh, a less than lethal weapon. Um, and we're going to see more of that as, as more of these things come in, especially with what they want to do for being able to pull ships out of quantum or being able to stabilize them and, and immobilize them before, you know, going on board. There's no point in having a boarding mechanic if there's no way to just shut down the ship without being lethal. And I, like I said so, earlier, yeah. even with normal weapons, I don't think that they could necessarily, they necessarily have to be fully lethal weapons. Um, I think that it, there needs to be more to it than just shooting at a ship and watching it explode for no reason. Aren't we, aren't we likely to see a rework for less than lethal weapons and um, some form of interdiction for 3.0 because cargo's coming in 
and piracy is coming in. Yeah. How are you going to stop people flying around with their cargo? You need to be able to interdict them somehow, and you need to be able to not destroy their ship so that you can steal their cargo. Yeah, or the initial thing could just be you blow up their ship and the cargo just sits there. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's just like a as, as the ship. initial implementation. I you think that would be a, a great you thing. You still need a way of stopping them, interdicting them. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise you just, you see someone and then they quantum jump. Quant- sorry, quantum drive. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and the, I think, did they talk about that on RTV? Something about the, there being a penalty? I can't remember. I, I haven't I seen RTV, that. so I can't. I don't know. Um, I feel like it, they, they did that. something like that. I can't That's remember. A, yeah, not sure. a penalty yeah. for spinning up your drive or something something like that so that you can attack people and pirates can go, you're undefended. I, 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 I knew where you were going to jump out. I've got you. Yeah. That's, that's important. Gotcha. Um, our next question is from Joker. And he asks, how do you each see your different organizations interfacing with one another? Will Soros be terrorizing, bored, and twerk? Or do you plan on working together with your subscribers and each other's orgs? I mean, Soros would have to find us. To my, if we were mining. Okay, so my whole thing is, we're I'm, friends. We're no, number one. We are friends, right? Yeah. Number one. Number two is I'm not going to be going and looking for twerk or board gamer or anybody specifically like that. And to be honest, most people, the way the way that I see myself playing as of right now, and this may change down the lo- the line. I don't want to lock myself into how I'm doing this. Is I I might not be you know. Uh, just blowing up and killing everybody that I see, unless that mm. is what turns into the meta because people just won't give up or or won't pay tolls or whatever like that. That being said, if if you know we have a friendly understanding between organizations, just because someone's a non-pirate organization or a pirate organization doesn't mean that they can't work together. Um, I'm doesn't sure mean there's going to be feelings, right? It's, I'm sure there's <laughs> going to be a lot of organizations that are going to work together, even. Even outside of the group of the three of us, right? They there may be smaller orgs that pay me protection money or pay uh, Imperium protection money or things like that that you normally wouldn't think be wor- be working together, but do in the verse anyways. I mean, we're gonna have to see how that meta plays out. But right now, um, it's not like we're all going in being buddy buddy, but we're not going all in going enemies either. And we're just gonna sort of have to feel out how things how things work out in the long term. Yeah. I mean, we are we are obviously content creators are all worried about being um, screen sniped or attacked just because they've got a name right. um, by them, which is obviously quite annoying. But uh, I mean, the way you counter that is by being extra stealthy. I mean, Saurus isn't going to be able to find me in twerk. That's going to if he finds us mining, that is going to be more of like, oh my fucking god, record. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> this this was not planned. This is going to be this an awesome or, fight. Or it was planned. And they have me there to help protect them from another pirate organization, or I'm incognito helping them out, or vice versa. Yeah, maybe, um, maybe stuff like that. Yeah, because I, I know as content creators, and especially uh, guys on the same team, we are going to want to do some stuff together because it'll be fun, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Duralis asks, I was wondering if you think the Reclaimer will be available for sale during the anniversary sale, and how much do you think it will be? I think it will, and I think it'll be three fifty dollars. Yeah, I think it'll be the same price, or yeah. three twenty five, or whatever. I think we don't. Yeah. We haven't really seen price changes until the ga- the ship comes into the game, and then that's sort of when we've been seeing price changes. Traditionally, that's not to say it won't do it that way, um, but I think it it will come in the anniversary sale. It's not a limited ship, um, and even sometimes the limited ships come in on that. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna say three fifty. I but, do think though, when ships come out, there's like a a price shift of between 33 and 25 percent increase ish, mm-hmm. almost always. Um, so just bear that in mind if it is getting closer to coming out by then. Although, yeah. And the next question well. actually goes in with this really well, uh, and it comes from Sunday of Doom. Do you think the Herald will stay the original price when it goes back on sale, or do you think it'll be increased? And I think that this one will get increased. Uh, it was originally I think 85 dollars. I could see this it going to 110. Yeah. Or, yeah, or $100 sure. uh, when it comes yeah, into the game. Yeah, 110 115 yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and so that's a perfect example of when those ships do increase. And I think we're going to see that uh, come in with the next patch, whether it be a 2.5.2, right? That would be the next minor patch, or if it was 2.6 or whatever patch comes out so next. Do you think they'd release the Herald before 2.6 just because it's ready? Yes, yeah, I think they, they, yeah. they're gonna, if they're going to release a patch, they might as well include the ships that are ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Why wouldn't they? They? They, did, they did say that at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So, okay, yeah. Um, Deck Gamer Dude 3 asks, do you think they will show off carrier landings with the Idris at CitizenCon? Oh, yeah. They, we know they've been playing around with that in the dev mm -hmm. branch of they, the game. Yeah, they said they were playing with those inter internally. And, of course uh, we will. Of course yeah. we'll see that. We'll see that in the Squadron 42 mission. Yeah, and that's going to be really cool. <laughs> the, we, we've seen the ships inside of the Idris. Now it's just seeing them take off and come in and land and stuff like that. And I think yeah, that's something controlled that's, by a player. I think oh. you're you're going to hear a couple woos in chat when that happens. <laughs> um, just come so in, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping that the first time they try and do the mission, they cr they crash into a wall. They do something stupid like like Chris did the first time he showed the Newtonian physics. Um, they just rammed into an asteroid. I, I want to see something like that. I want to see something go wrong due to human error, and they have to start the, the thing again N near the beginning of the demo. Obviously, I don't mm -hmm. want to. I don't want them to have their lives fucked up. <laughs> but I do want to. I want to see something go wrong where they die or they crash into a wall and they go. Fuck I love that. I love where stuff goes a little bit wrong. It's because I'm British. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Uber nerd asks: Should CIG make scanner lures or decoys? that can pl place on asteroids and can mimic a ship's signature. This could make it so a miner could place them around an area he was mining. If so, that pirates scan an area, they would see live Gladius or, and one prospector, or only if the prospector was real. And you could, uh, I'm going to add to this, you could see it the other way around, where it's like there's a down ship, but instead it's a bomb. And this is something they had actually talked about before, where they have like these decoy scanners that you could say, hey, I need help. But in reality, it's a mine, or it's it's a yeah. booby trap, or, or stuff like it's that. So this is very much the mandate of Joker, isn't it? Yeah. Joker Technology yep. is what they're called. Um, they like they like stuff like that, like the um. They love their the decoys. They love their, and... their different decoys and stuff like that. And I think that yeah. that adds a lot to the game, without without it being too difficult to implement. It it makes it so it's like oh, you know there is that. It looks like it's a single hull B, by itself. Do I want to go there, or do I think it's a trap? You know what I mean? Or, that looks like pirates. Is that something we're going to have to deal with uh, because we're doing this convoy nearby? Mm -hmm. Or do we just ignore it and see what happens with it? Mm -hmm. So that could be really, really interesting. Uh, Dimiskal asks, if scanning mechanics and other mechanics are still to be implemented, how is, how is supposed Squadron 42 to be ready soon? Um, I think it's because you're going to see, I mean, I guess the, a lot of the scanning stuff, is, like for the mining and stuff like that can be implemented later because you're, this is very much purely a military, um, from a military perspective, I guess is the best way to put it. So they and just need, they, right, the single player and military perspective is a scanning mechanics that they need in. They don't necessarily need the exploration and mining and science scanning stuff in. So, and... No. Yeah, so it may, it may be sooner than we imagine for that coming in. And in fact, the passive scanning, the passive radar that we already have, will be most of the functionality that they need. The active ping stuff, they're going to know where the ships are anyway. They can have stuff semi-scripted. They, they can have loads of tricks and stuff in the single player that, yeah. that, that they can't fake in the multiplayer stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's a different system and a lot easier to implement for single mm -hmm. player. As um, with everything. Mm -hmm. Another question from New School. With Citizen Gone approaching, have you any of you and he says that won't be streaming, but I'll say any of us thought about doing a reaction video or a YouTube thing after the main event. Literally I'm doing fuck my reaction videos from there. But literally fuck reaction videos. Um, I think that's I mean, dumb. We, our podcast is a reaction video. Yeah, that's the thing, is, is we go <laughs> through this and, and we, <laughs> we talk about our reactions. And definitely the next episode of Redacted, we will, we will we'll, it's the things we get excited about. And that's what we're going to talk about. So that's where you're going to see it. So you'll see a live reaction video here 
on on redacted and then it'll be going up onto youtube and itunes as well so mm-hmm. but also to heavily plug myself i am um an hour before citizen con streaming and then a, re- a reacting a reaction video I, of, I, I will be reacting you're reacting then, before the stream yeah yeah i'm reacting yeah. before citizen con we're gonna watch it all together anyone that wants to join me is more than welcome we'll watch it all together on the stream and then an hour afterwards we'll we'll continue an hour afterwards to digest and talk about it and um and kind of drool a bit we'll probably be drinking as well and there might be giveaways probably yeah there'll be all kinds of cool stuff so um i know board gamers gonna probably be streaming and i know mentality will be streaming uh i think everybody else we're gonna be there so hopefully you'll see us in the audience we'll do some sort of thing to say hi if we can or maybe we'll call in or something um grit spitter asks with star marine quickly approaching have you all thought about some friendly streamer tournaments? Perhaps some group of various stars and Twitch streamers and their subs, viewers teaming up in a friendly competition. Most definitely, this is something that I've been waiting for. And I know, I don't know what's going on with the new website, but I know that the old website had that potential fun- functionality. Um, and I'm it's sure we're not gonna, in the new. We're, we may we try can, and can, get can, that can, to work in there because we, that's one of the big things that I know, me personally, I want to have. To be able to do i want to be able to set up tournaments this is the kind of stuff i love and i and the other thing too is when i was at twitchcon um and we have some of them here in chat is guys that that create esports out of specific games and create different esports teams so i will be bouncing ideas off of them and bringing them in, in into the fold for that kind of stuff so definitely mm-hmm. maybe not right away but it's something that we have our eye on and we're going to be building out uh in the future Show. Woo! I think I, I, things just need to be solid before yes. you can start doing. I'm going to try hard so much in 2.6. I'm going to be get as, genuinely get as many hours as I can in Star Marine. And I think and that's that's there. something that you're going to see regardless of what organization people are in and things like that. Especially as content creators, you might see a full team of just content creators being on one team versus the viewers, or one team of redacted versus test, or. Test versus but, BNG, or my me and my viewers versus Twerk, or or board gamer and his that, viewers. That that four man helmet cam video. Yeah, that would be amazing if we have four people all filming at once, and we can have the four on the screen, and then go into one camera, and then go back into the four man when no much, not much action is happening, and keep on zooming. That's the sort of content I want to do for multiplayer stuff. And Definitely. with two point six, we can do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's there's a so lot good. of really cool stuff that we're going to be able to do with that. And uh, so, like I said, keep your eyes open for that. Mm-hmm. Winlord00 as do you think the Polaris will be able to carry a full-size fighter? Yes, now, I do. I would hope so. It's Limited it's, carrying capacity. It is yeah. yes. replacing the Idris. We do know that it is replacing the Idris, and the Idris initial thing was to carry ships. But the Idris went to a frigate size to be able to carry multiple ships like that. We've seen the interior of it. Um, as a single ship, Maybe. I uh, I'm not I'm not entirely I, I, sure of what it means what a Corvette means to be completely honest and if neither if do they at the moment because it's okay. in space as well and Corvettes and frigates and stuff change yeah. significantly from World War One to World War Two and and that sort of stuff so I feel that it's probably going to be a two fighter ship that's that's my that's my gut I uh, yeah I it just kind of makes sense yeah, yeah. it's got to have more than it. one. It does uh, have to have more than one. Like, I'm thinking the Connie can hold the ship. I'm know? thinking two fighters and a possibly an Arco. That's what I'm thinking. That'd be crazy. That'd be awesome. You're, you're crazy, boy. You're crazy. No, like crazy as in like that'd be it. that'd be cool. Yeah, it would be. I'm uh, speaking American, man. My bad. <laughs> Marka. You are. You are. My um, bad. I think Zed's with those S's. Good job. Uh, Lion Star Good Star job. Citizen asks. I was wondering how. If there will be a mission to, to refill the repair stations in space, right? Because they would need materials to repair things. I mean, that would make sense to refuel. Mm-hmm. Um, in 3.0, just because the repair aspect is needing different materials and, and, and fuel and things like that. Uh, he also goes on to say, I've noticed that they always say we have your materials are in stock, right? When you come in and land, they're like, we have your materials in stock. Would you like to refuel or, and repair and all this other stuff uh, when I go to repair now in 2.5? He also adds on as a caveat, thanks guys, I just joined Twitch today about an hour ago, and he's going to subscribe soon, thanks for doing all of this. And thank you for being here, we do this uh, for you guys, 
So that means a lot that you've said that. So we do really, really appreciate that. But to answer your question, um, I think so. I think that's, that's what's going to be one of those uh, ongoing missions, uh, procedural missions that, you know, you need to go and refuel that. I don't know if it's going to come in with 3.0. What do you think? The procedural missions? Like, like, okay, no, no, not the procedure. Like I'm saying, it could become a procedural mission later on, right? Where a repair station runs out of materials and refuel, and so it pops up in the in the missions, and you need to go grab that stuff and bring it to the repair station. I don't station. think it's going to be mission based. I think it's just going to be there, like, but yeah, I don't think it'll be three O type thing. I think I definitely yeah, think maybe. It's, I definitely think it's going to be a mission. To say, hey, the At UEE, sure. yeah, yeah, the UEE needs needs, uh, let's say, uh, iron and what, what? Let's say their fuel is hydrogen, or we don't know what it is. I'm just making up mm -hmm. materials right now. They need that. This mission pops up on the mission docket. You can accept it and bring stuff there, and then you get rewarded for that. I think, I think that's definitely going to be a mission eventually. I don't sure. think that's going to be in 3.0. 3.0 is the first implementation of lots of things. Yeah. So it could be. It's going to be awesome, but I don't know if it's going to be like, I don't think it's going to be the end game that's just going to come in one patch. Like, they're going to iterate and make more things on it. But uh, I know that there, it's gone. It's there's, gone. there's something interesting happening. Like, we talked about um, last week, Luke saying. That he was putting a little Easter egg into two six. Oh, yeah, huge, but he yeah. said the Easter egg's so elaborate that it's basically another mission. So, um, okay. that's so there might be something interesting coming in the next patch too. I don't know. Like they're, it's hard to say. It's hard to say what they're gonna put in three O because three O is so big on the back end side. That okay. are they gonna get some assumption in and hope it doesn't destroy everything? And then put a bunch of missions, like make missions after, right? Yeah, it's weird. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's it's, it's especially hard to say because we don't have those that mission system in yet. Yeah, um, I mean, and it comes to three O. So when the mission system have, comes in, we'll know. We're yeah. gonna have loads. Yeah. We're gonna have loads of missions three point oh, and it's gonna be the best, and it's gonna be better than any game that ever existed. And I'm going to never play another game again. <laughs> You're gonna put your mouth <laughs> for a little while at least. <laughs> We all, we all know it's first implementation, so it's going to be a little rough in the beginning, most in, likely. Indeed. NS Archer uh, says, hey, guys, I really appreciate your commentary and humor in these podcasts. And so thank you for that. Um, he says, call me boring, but I am as excited as you all are for scanning, but also the research with the biomes and things being revealed. You're boring. You're boring. <laughs> uh, I disagree. I think that's really exciting stuff to be and to be excited about. Um, his question, though, is how excited are you for the plant, fauna, and flora research careers? Um, so I think that's more of the science kind of stuff. I think it's cool, but I'm more excited for the fact that they're putting fauna in, so then yeah. they can maybe complete that stretch goal of having pets. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea that I'm mining on a planet with a prospector, and then I see a rare bowl and shoot it in the face and go, well, that's another 200 thousand UEC. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Look how cute it is. Boom, shotgun. This looks great yes. over my mantle. Oh yeah. That Fantastic. Means, it, if you can start to like do taxidermy and stuff alien creatures, I will murder everything I see. <laughs> I'll just have I'll just have an entire ship full of like little tiny pygmy pig things that I found on this planet. I was like, I want loads of them. Can I just can I just put loads of flare everywhere in my hangers? Oh my god. Pig 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 pig. It'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if they do stuff like that, I'll be I'll be happy as Larry. Now I don't yeah. like how how are you guys about like comp being a completionist for games? Like it, it depends on specific things. So it, I'll, I'll use WoW. I collected mounts and I collected pets when I wasn't doing stuff. Like when I wasn't like because there's only so much you can do with like the the end game raid stuff and and doing missions or whatever when you're collecting money. So when you have that downtime. Or whatever that's what i was all about was collecting like pets or mounts or or um that kind of stuff so i won't be 100 percent completionist uh, but i will be for specific things if that makes sense like i feel like i'm gonna want to try and find all the plants i'm not gonna succeed or like the fish or something like it's like i want to yeah. have 
like the coolest fish tank that has like the rarest fish and all that other stuff in it. I might I might take some time out of a, once a week or something, you know, and and do that for a while. Like, all right, guys, I want to really chill stream. I'm gonna I'm gonna look for plants today. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, the next question is from <laughs> Demoskull asking me, "Am I ready?" For the Star Citizen stream on Friday and Saturday, and I have one word, kind of, to answer that. Woo! <laughs> I'm like super, super excited for it, man. It's like, it's getting closer and closer and becoming more and more real. And I know that how much fun Twerk had and all the other guys had doing it uh, and being able to sit down with those guys. So I'm really excited to, uh, I'm excited for it. Um, our next question from the prisoner CIG said they made the ship slower due to throttle control. So does that mean that dual stick users and Hotas, Hojam, etc., are being nerfed, meaning easier for keyboard and mouse users? We don't know until we, we have don't hands know, on yeah. experience. Um, and CIG are normally relatively good at being controller agnostic. So they're trying, um, you know. It's really hard to say without having that in our hands. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they said they wanted the throttle stuff so that it was easier for throttles. So, if anything, they're getting a rebalance or a buff. That was the intended purpose. Um, I think? Maybe? Did I? Uh, <laughs> our, yeah, I don't know. It, like I said, it's hard for us to say without us having our hands on it, but we do know that CIG is going to do their best for controller parity that they can. Uh, ASN, out of Sergey Novak, asks, Did any of you play The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt? If yes, do you think we can see as much character or quest detail in Squadron 42? One of the reasons Witcher became Game of the Year was because it was going the extra mile without adding so much content compared to other games. Do you think Star Citizen and or Squadron 42 will do the same? I've never played Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Um, so I have it. I haven't gotten to it yet. I bet your board's played it. I ain't played it. I'm not into those sexy sex games. I watch proper porn. <laughs> it's all a, I didn't, a sexy I didn't even know game. there was a sex game. It's all a, you have. You can shag on a unicorn. <laughs> it's, it's all. It's all about sexy. I stuffed unicorn. You can have sex on that. You can have sex with pretty much all of the characters. It's all about sex, and then occasionally <laughs> kill a manticore. <laughs> Pew! Just go, bam, and then sexy time. What? What? Yeah, exactly. Now you wish All you I used to how awesome the game is, and then you said I can have sex with the unicorn, and now I'm like, no, I don't no. know how to play it. Well, I mean, the unicorn is there, although it is dead. Yeah. Um, spoilers, bro. What the fuck? Right? <laughs> spoilers. You ruined the whole game. Oh, hello, Lola. What yeah, so. What are you doing? <laughs> it's like cat distraction. Um, I imagine knowing Chris and knowing how. Uh, cinematic these things are and, and in-depth with the character and things like that. I'm sure we're gonna see a lot of character depth Especially with the main characters um, Especially I, the female. It's hard. I think it's, it's called every female character off ever in these games. I I yeah. can't say I can't compare it to Witcher 3 because I've never played it But I think there's gonna be a lot of depth and and everything with those characters Now we have some special questions in here from oh. CIG Zylo and what? Uh, uh, this first one is definitely a loaded question. A loaded question. Who are you most excited to meet at CitizenCon? And he says in brackets, it does not have to be CIG. And I'm going to start with yeah, Pork17. Is Disco going? <laughs> um, God. That's Probably, silent. I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of who is going to CitizenCon that I haven't met yet. Uh... Come back to me, please. Okay. Um, and obviously, Bored, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to make it to this one. Um, so for myself, this is, this is tough um, because there's a lot of people that are up there. The first thing is the other content creators and, and the viewers especially that are in the channel and come to the podcast all the time. Yeah. I'm super excited. That's why we're putting together these little grab bag things for you guys and everything. I'm super, super excited. To me, like I'm, I'm tearing up a little bit just to meet you guys right now. This is going to be the biggest event, hands down, for me to meet the, the guys who are coming in. Yep. So that's really, really exciting. Number two, obviously Chris Roberts. 
is someone that I want to meet because of this is his vision, his thing, and he is the whole reason why I got into this game and why I started streaming it and everything as well. But on top of that, all the, uh, the guys especially that come into this channel, you know, guys like Zylo, uh, Matt Sherman, Jeremiah Lee, uh, Luke Presley if he's there, um, who, who else do we have? Brian Chambers, uh, uh, Sean Tracy, I'm really excited to meet my Canadian brother from another Canadian mother. Um, it, it just goes, I'm excited to meet everybody that's there and that's why I'm so excited. That's like the biggest thing for me. The, the being able to actually see these people in real life and put faces to everybody's names and, and being able to humanize a lot of you guys that come into chat and, and all of that stuff. I'm, I love it. And I saw a lot of you guys at TwitchCon. We saw some of you guys at PAX. This is the most exciting part of the, all the events for me is to be able to see you guys uh, in, in person. So, yeah, I'm going to come back to you, Twerk. I, I mean, that that's definitely my answer, but he asked us to choose one. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't really, so... I'm going to say the I mean, viewers... I could, I could probably choose one CIG member, um, and that would, it, would be, uh, it would be Matt, because yeah. Matt's here all the time, and, and I got to meet a lot of the, the devs that, that interact with me on a regular basis. Um, like Zylo, I've met a couple times now, and... Yep. Um, and then uh, the guys at Gamescom, I got to meet a lot of them. But uh, Matt is probably the person who's most active Definitely. that I haven't met yet. You know, like so. like I've I've uh, met Zylo uh, several times, Lando several times. I met Ben and Alexis for this first time last weekend. Yeah, I, I haven't met them yet, so that's another. They were one. super friendly and really awesome. Um, yeah, I mean Matt Sherman's the first person I'm gonna see. He's picking me up from the airport, uh, so huge shout out that's to you cool. for for doing that. So yeah, like. And then as soon as I'm going directly to CIG, so I'm just going to be overwhelmed with all the CIG stuff that I'm going to be meeting right I, away. I think this is the joy uh, and the difference between Gamescom and CitizenCon. CitizenCon is much more a celebration for the fans. It's for people that are going there, for like Soros and Twerk and people, it's their chance to meet with their fans, to meet with other star citizen like-minded fans that all want to be there to have fun, to drink and to, to have a good time and celebrate the game. And that's a great networking experience for people yeah. that you just want to, that are your peers. They, they, us as content creators, we've started on, on Star Citizen. Anyone could have done what we did, basically. Mm -hmm. We've just chosen to do it, and we've had great community support from you guys and just kind of fell into it or whatever. Well, that's what's happened to me anyway. Yeah, um, definitely. And it's just amazing that I'm, I'm really jelly that I'm not going. And I just think it's... It's such a good just like celebration of just saying hello to everyone and just everyone being on the same level. I just love that. I think it's, I think it's gonna be a great, a great. I think thing. I'm gonna make a reaction video when I meet everybody. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, his second question. This comes from Zylo well as well. Is when do you all arrive in LA? Um, so for myself, I land at 11 a.m. on Friday, and I need to be at the studio for 12. So literally, Matt Sherman's picking me up on his way to work, and we're going to work together. Nice. Um, are you gonna bring your lunch pails? You uh, guys are so cute. We're gonna be we're gonna be lunch buddies. Um, <laughs> nice. Now I know Twerk is is sort of up in the air right now for you to go, and with a hurricane that could mean grounded flights. It could mean all kinds of different things. Even if you are able to go, um, but what is what is your schedule right now for arriving in LA? Um, me and Sniffle are on the same flight, so we're gonna sit next to each other on the flight, which is gonna be awesome. Um, and we are leaving at 10.45 a.m. from here. I think we get in at 2 p.m. on a Saturday. Okay. On Saturday. So uh, 2 p.m. on Saturday. So basically, uh, the plan is when you're done with your stream, mm -hmm. depending on what you guys are doing, because uh, you might go out with uh, the Star Citizen guys or something like that, yep. we're going to try and get together before the Bar Citizen, if we can, uh, for like maybe like an early lunch, something like that, or like a late dinner, or, or so, I, I don't know. But we're gonna try and meet up at, with as many like redacted people as I can that Saturday. Uh, we're gonna try and get a little get together, and then there is the bar citizen, so we're all gonna go there. There's, and there's gonna be a bunch of bar citizens. Wherever the after actually. party is, there's two like official bar citizens. I think one is on Friday, which I'm really sad I can't make, and then one is on Saturday. And they're both on the bar citizen website, right? Barcitizen.sc. 
Yeah, and they're also on the CitizenCon page on the Star Citizen it, website. Isn't there also a plan straight after CitizenCon to go across the road to a probably as well? <laughs> probably. probably. <laughs> There's going to be so many events going on, and I, I'm yeah. going to say yeah. right now, I wish I could be all at all of them all at the same time. Um, I know for myself, I'm going to just be updating on Twitter where I'm at, and uh, that's going to be the best way if you want to come meet me or come hang out or whatever. That's going to be the best way to figure out where I'm at, is I'll True. just be tweeting yeah. out all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> www.tracksaurus.com. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And so <laughs> I'll like where he is, a link for the CitizenCon post, so you can get the information and the details there in the chat. So Thanks, Zylo. Cool. Uh, and Zylo asked me this question, but I'm going to actually include you two guys in on this as well. well thanks, well, for me, us, Zylo. I know, right? For me, he's like, what is your favorite color that's not red or black? I'm going to say, Twerk, what is your favorite color that's not blue or black? And board gamer, what is your favorite color that's not yellow? For me, it's blue. Everybody knows my favorite color is blue, anyways. Fuck red and black. Blue is where it's at. Obviously, that's my whole shit's blue. What are you colorblind? The dress is is red. Soros. No, it's the dress it's black and gold. <laughs> it's black, black and gold. gold. It's blue and gold. Black it's gold. blue and gold. Uh, but twerk, what is your, what is your favorite color? Other than blue and or it's, black. It's weird, but I love gray. I love gray. Like metallic colors, it's, I guess. Yeah. But gray. Quite, quite like like this room military, is all gray. Gray and black. Like the military green of uh, the UEE. Yeah, I... Um, but I, I'm quite Harlequin, to be honest, in my color schemes. Like, I really like rainbow color stuff. I really like the South by Southwest Aurora skin. Um, but yellow is definitely my favorite. Maybe orange. Let's go orange. That's bright. Woo! Uh, woo! Our, yeah, woo! <laughs> Creamsicle. <laughs> Creamsicle. Uh, oh. Sunday of Doom asks, uh, oh, this is to me, I guess. Since Twerk bought Zeus and Kazu in his mods for Star Citizen Gamescom stream and did a freaking badass job helping deal with all the spat cha uh, well, ch spat cham? Chat spam. Spat chat. Chat spam. Which mods Chat -chat. are you choosing to add to the Star Citizen moderator pool to help out? Um, I haven't been asked to bring any of the mods in, but if they do, all of my mods are amazing. Um, and uh, that includes you, Sunday. I know you're not no longer a mod on the channel because of your own stuff, but if that's something that you want to do, I would love to bring you on if they ask me to do that. Um, all my mods will, will, will have that opportunity to do that. Um, if that's something they want to do, I know it's going to be a lot of work, and it's it's not like it, it's a. I know it's a lot more insane than it normally is on this channel. Um, I still need to talk to those guys to see if that's something they need or not. Um, I think you should all spat champ and spat in chat and champ. see how uh, see how spat good the mods actually are. <laughs> Uh, Ronan Shadowfleet asks, "Do you think that the Banu and other big ships is?" are going to be a rare ship in the game and hard to get a hold of. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. Banu, definitely. I think, and, I think and the just large ships, ships in, in general, general. there's certain ships they want to be rare. It, it's so, like, it's like ahead. in real life, you, how often do you see giant yachts or big planes and, and stuff like that compared to, you know, uh, Toyota Camrys? Right, I think that's sort of what I, I go back to the car references a lot, but I think that's the the best thing that I can use as an analogy uh, for the ships yeah. in the game. And our last question from Tank House Mob: What do you think the best solo exploration, light mining, or gather setup will be? Dragonfly or or the Ursa Rover inside Nakilla is is the question. And what do you think the benefits and drawbacks between carrying a rover versus a dragonfly and vice versa is? Um, so I think for, for a solo exploration, light mining or gather setup, so for the exploration, I'm going to say probably something more along the lines of a Mustang Beta. And for a miner, we had, uh, what was the mining ship called? Prospector. Prospector. The Prospector. I like the idea of using a, a freelancer Durr. I think that's a good value for ship. Um, for exploration, and uh, you can chuck a you can chuck a like a dragonfly maybe in the back. Right. Um, but I mean, we don't know what the setups are going to be because we don't know what the items are going to be, and I doubt um, some ships will. Uh, you have to. 
I doubt some ships will just be the answer to this is the best at this. I mean, obviously, like there'll be high tier miners like the Orion for strip mining and stuff, but I think that that might be more of a fuzzy question than something we can answer. Right. Really. See what I mean? And we had one more question sneak in. Uh, uh, did you have anything to add to that, Twerk, before we jump to the next one? No. No. Um, you guys mentioned, and this is from uh, that gamer dude, 3. You guys mentioned that piracy will be hard in 3.0 with quantum travel in its current form. Do you think quantum travel or QT drive overheating uh, or heating or overheating would work as a limit to quantum tra uh, travel jump distance? Uh, this could make QT jumps pseudo predictable for pirates, but still random enough for transports. They talked about how if your shields are down, you wouldn't be able to do that. And I think we might start to see those mechanics come in. I don't know about the, the overheating or heating with those engines, but possibly. Yeah, it's hard. I don't know. I hope they do, they do stuff like that. So we'll see. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to say. Um, before we go into what we're up to next week, I just want to say once more that uh, we are sponsored by Antlion Audio. They do have a giveaway Woo! happening right now in conjunction with us at Redacted, uh, giving away a mod mic, adapters, a Superlux HD 668B headset, and an Antlion Uber mouse pad. Uh, there's 14 ways for you to... $160 value. $160 value. There's 14 ways to enter into that. Uh, and all of them are free, so definitely go check that out. And we also have a monthly giveaway from Redacted, exclamation point monthly in chat for more information about that. Or if you're listening to this on YouTube or whatever, you can find the link below uh, the video. So why don't we talk about uh, what we're doing next and where everybody can find us. So Board Gamer, we'll start with you. What do you plan for this next week? And where can well, everybody all... find you? You can find me on pretty much everywhere at Board Gamer UK. That's uh, on the, the YouTubes, which is my main area of expertise, uh, but also on um, the the Twitches and uh, the social medias uh, like Twitter. Um, but this week, I'm going to be prepping for CitizenCon, as I expect most other people will be, um, getting ready for the free flight stuff. So I'll just be getting videos, like semi-prepared footage for them, um, getting ready for live streaming on Sunday. Um, and yeah, because there's not much uh, in the way of news happening this week uh, until CitizenCon, I'll be resting as much as I can, um, just getting a couple of lighter videos out, maybe. To ready, um, ready to go hard. Ready yeah. to go hard, yeah. Because it's it's going to be it's going to affirm a lot of stuff CitizenCon for me. It's going to kind of give me a better idea when Squadron Forty Two is coming out, when Three Point is coming out, when Two Point Six is coming out, and then we can plan content. Um, and then I can go, well, shall I move into these videos or these videos? I'll also be doing some stuff with HCS voice packs, hopefully this week, um, and uh, a little video explaining on how to uh, people should support their favorite streamers by using their Amazon Prime accounts uh, for, for free subage. But uh, and other than that, that, what about you, Twerk? What are you doing? Hmm? Um, I'm having a stare down right now, but no, um, <laughs> she is. But the so as soon as the podcast goes offline, I have to make food. I have to tie things to my fence, and then uh, I'm gonna stream tomorrow morning. The storm shouldn't get here until like early afternoon, but I just want to make sure I, I'm prepared and I don't have to rush in. Like because even though the storm storm's not gonna be here, we're probably gonna start getting some outer bands of it uh, late this evening. Mm -hmm. So going outside and trying to do any tidying up of things uh, is not ideal uh, when it's raining, right? So I'm going to do that. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to stream. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully Friday I'm going to stream. Cross our fingers that everything's fine. Saturday, Sniffle's going to come here. We're going to do a little short stream, wave goodbye to everybody, get on the plane, and go to CitizenCon. I definitely have plans for doing vlogs big time, like way better than I've been doing them, and I, I, I really enjoy doing them, so it's something I, I really take pride in, and um, I really do it, f like, I don't necessarily do it for anyone other than myself, I'm really trying to document my travels and my fun, and to have that on the mm. internet forever is, is great, to always look back at it, and um, I just ha I have some cool ideas and some fun stuff that uh, that'll be, that'll, that we'll put together, so hopefully we can get some, like, interview 
interviewy things. Uh, the the mod mic guy showed us that we can actually put our mod mic in our iPhone and use this as like a decent mic to talk mm-hmm. to each other with instead of using the actual mic there. So I'm going to spend some time trying to figure that out on the plane and beforehand. So maybe when I see Zylo, I can be like, when is the Banu Merchantman coming out? And then <laughs> he'll punch me in the face or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to say this uh, to you to work. Um, definitely keep everybody, uh, especially me, in the loop of what's going on. Yeah, I'm going to be um, Twittering. No matter what. Because yeah. I'll likely always have cell signal, so... Yeah. And guys, make sure you're following my phone Twi- now, so. on, on Twitter so you can keep a, in the loop with what's going on with him and making sure that he's safe because obviously um, you're in everybody's minds while this is happening uh, down in Florida. Um, yeah. For myself, uh, right after this, I'm going to be streaming. Going to be giving away another LTI ship. Um, going to be getting ready for CitizenCon. Literally, like... One more day, and I'm ready to go. So uh, obviously, I'm down at CitizenCon on Friday and Saturday. If you haven't Are you already, yet? no. I honestly, I only bring a backpack. So I'm just gonna do laundry, shove because all my stuff is still dirty from from TwitchCon. So yeah. I got to do laundry tonight. I'm gonna pack all that stuff in there. Uh, I gotta bring the stuff that I'm bringing for you, and and everything else, and and uh, yeah, and go. It's, uh, oh, I'm yeah, really you, easy to pack. Soros got me some sweet swag. I got you some Con. sweet sweet Ooh. Twitch swag. Um, and so yeah, so definitely check out, like I said, from 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific to 6 p.m. Per- I can't talk. Uh, Pacific. <laughs> um, we're going to be streaming from the Star Citizen uh, Twitch channel. Obviously, we're going to be all be in the audience for uh, the big presentation. We'll be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, excited about that. And then I come back on Monday morning or Tuesday morning, sorry. So I may be a little bit late to stream, but I do plan on streaming on Tuesday when I come back. And then uh, we'll be having our, everybody will be home for the podcast next week um, and ready to go for that. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash WTFosaurus and on twitter.com slash WTFosaurus. And once again, guys, if you are enjoying these podcasts, if you're enjoying what we do as a redacted team, uh, definitely check out our website, redacted.tv. Uh, Dude, and- we forgot. What did we forget? Whoa. The shirt. Oh my god! I can't I forgot the fucking shirt! We have a shirt, guys! Uh, yes! We have a redacted shirt that you can go and pick up. Twerk, can you put the link in chat for that? Please? I gotta show you about the shirt. Oh my it's, god. Uh, it comes oh in god. only one color and that's black. Yeah, hold on. I can't believe that. And we also have <laughs> a. Uh, a redacted Patreon that you can find at patreon.com slash redacted. Any and all help is super helpful and allows us to do our monthly giveaways that we've been doing, pay for the website, pay for our emails, uh, and and help us do the podcast and all other kinds of things, go to events, etc. And so we will we will be starting to push that redacted Patreon a little bit more um, because it is quite um, quite useful. It's it's redacted essential. as a community. So to thank, be honest, it's essential. Yeah. 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 From all of Which us. Is quite- Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to our podcast. I know I had a lot of people that come up to me and are like, oh, you know, I listen to your podcast on iTunes.